Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to UTV Sports. I'm James Mira here with Sean Smith, and uh, he's the nephew of the late great, not late. No, he's current. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, George he's still alive. King, uh, Coach Tim Salter and Coach Morgan. So, what do you make of this game today against the Phantoms, Upland Highlanders versus Cathedral Phantoms? This should be a very good game, James. And first of all, let me say it's a pleasure to be here. I it's am a pleasure uh, to have you. I'm looking forward to what should be a very exciting game. Two teams have two very, both teams have two very talented young quarterbacks. On uh, Cathedral side, they have sophomore Bryce Young, number five, and on the other side of the football field will be number five as well from Upland. His name's David Baldwin, a junior, six foot four for Baldwin. He's got a number of college offers on the table already. So both these quarterbacks, I don't, I don't see them disappointing tonight. One of the biggest games of their young careers. That's right. Uh, Upland coming in at 11-0, and the Phantoms coming in at 10-1, uh, lost to Loyola in the preseason. Uh, Upland High School, of course, uh, total enrollment, 3,456. There's 138 teachers. Can you tell me a little bit about Cathedral? Cathedral, small private school based out of Los Angeles, right in the heart of downtown, just across the street from Dodger Stadium, right near uh, Echo Park, near the 110 freeway. Smaller school, considerably smaller than Upland, whereas Upland's got a couple thousand students. Cathedral's only got about 750 students enrolled. Now we just heard earlier that Tim Salter, his first coaching stint was at Cathedral. Interesting. And his uh, father also uh, coached there, I guess from the 50s to 68. A lot of lineage going back to Cathedral High School. All right, and uh, Upland's getting ready to kick. Uh, the Phantoms had won the toss and elected to defer for the second half. So they'll kick off now. We had our captains, Tavoy Hochins and uh, Corey Thomas. All right, Upland will be receiving the ball. We also had Andre Barnes and Elijah Klein. There's the kickoff. Line drive kickoff, picked up at the seven yard line. And the run is to the left side. And Up to about the 18 yard line. Yeah, so. Brought down at the 19 yard line where it'll be first and 10 upward. Optimally, right. when you uh, return the ball, you want to get past the 20. Because the terp typical touchback is 20 yards. That's getting it in the end zone. Tackle so you want to run as far as you can. Wilson. Any positive yards past the 20 the is great for your team. Uh, we could attribute that to a little bit of shoddy blocking on the side of Upland, whereas that was a rather shallow kick, so they didn't have enough time to actually gather themselves and provide any sort of line of blocking, but we'll see what they do. That's right, here comes Upland with uh, two receivers already showing. They're not even going to go to a huddle, they're just going to straight into the formation. They've got, looks like an I formation. Oh, we'll see them back. We got a penalty flag right off the back, it looks like. Somebody on Cathedral jumped off sides. We'll listen for the yeah, call. Yeah, looking at uh, Upland, they're signaling that it was on Offside the Phantoms. Cathedral, five yard penalty. All right. They jumped First into neutral zone. Five. First and five. There's a little Slide bit bump. of a... Baldwin's back under pressure. Baldwin. Throws yep. the ball away. Penalty Looks like there could be a field. hold in the backfield. Yeah, so flag goes down and uh, Baldwin Gets that pass off, even though he was being rushed to throw. Almost got a sack there. Started off a little shaky. He ran right into his, uh, what his is that? fullback. Yeah, yeah. It was his fullback right, ran right into him, kind of altered the play. So it looks like Upland's going to be going back. Yeah, not a great start yeah. for their first play. Holding penalty against Upland. Ten yard holding penalty. So it'll go back to first and 15, I believe. So on top of the debacle, they also had the, well at the, the holding penalty. Line. Pinned down to their own nine yard line. All right. Trips well, to the right. Single receiver on the left side. A pistol. Ball hand one hands off. Hand off Kyle Jones. And Kyle Jones ball. right down the middle. And picks up six yards and he's at the 15 yard line. All right. After some, some a shoddy start to the game, that was a nice little eight-yard run. Logan Applewhite. So, Logan Applewhite on the tackle. I fully expect to see uh, David Baldwin unleash his throwing prowess rather early in this game. 
He's yeah, he's a big time passer. The lefty. Drops back. Uh, scrambles a little bit. Goes on the run. Oh, incomplete. So. Pass for number three, Taj Davis. So Taj Davis is uh, one of his favorite targets. Baldwin's thrown for quite a bit this year. 2,445, right? Yeah, and just last week alone, he was 18 to 23 for more than 250 yards and three touchdowns against Tessor, based out of Orange County. He's got 33 touchdowns total. What do you think, they're going to be conservative here and run it up the middle, or do you think they're going to air it out to Taj? they're going to air it out. There they go. He drops back, faces a little pressure, runs back, gets a nice little pass up to... He's up at the 40-yard line. First down. And that's the fullback, Kyle Jones, catching it and then getting a, a bunch of yards afterwards. And that's a big key here is not just catching it, but what you do after the catch. Followed his blockers. A nice pickup of 25 yards or so on the play. Just what Upland needed. After a slight difficult start to start this football game, a couple penalties, some shoddy blocking, and Baldwin's it, able to find his one of his favorite targets for a nice little game. And it wasn't an easy throw. Baldwin Tom had to Upland. run around in his pocket a little bit. Upland He's getting a lot of pressure in that backfield. Rogers is located on the northwest corner of 16th and Mountain. For great food, yeah, Baldwin's great been throwing a lot. He's thrown for more than 2,300 yards this season. He's averaging over 210 yards a game. He's got 32 passing touchdowns through the air, compared to only five interceptions on the season. Quite remarkable, remarkable numbers for the young man. Now, Carl Jones is uh, more known for his running back position. Uh, he has 14 touchdowns this year. But you saw him there, he's got hands as well. Absolutely. That was a nice little pickup here. They got some pressure on it. Cathedral got some pressure on Baldwin. And uh, it was a very nice pickup of Kyle Jones to find that open seam right up the middle. Kind of bailed out his team right there. Yeah, it's a tough place to catch it right down the middle like that. Uh, it's, there's a lot of traffic. Very cerebral of Jones. <laughs> okay. So let's see what the Scots or the Highlanders do at this moment. We got a single back. All right, little play action fake. To Jones, Baldwin's on, on the move again. Away from two tackles. Oh wow! Breaks the tackle. To another Ten one. yard game. Decides to take it on his own. And he's going to get a first down. Quite athletic. David Baldwin has that rare trait where it just seems so natural for him to make the other team miss. I know as, as simple as it sounds, it's a very difficult attribute. Yeah, because you have to have an awareness around you. Like you have to sense the players that are surrounding you and, and know that there's somebody behind you about to tap you. They're in I formation now and close together. I suspect this is going to be a run. Hands off to Kyle. To the right side off the tackle. Paul Jones again. They are marching down the field right now. Kyle Jones sporting the golden shoes today. <laughs> uh, he's not their usual starter, but he's picking up a grip of yards today. Kyle Jones upended, but gets him out for the Upland first and 10. Upland, Upland kind of has a dynamic dual running back combination with Kyle Jones, who we're seeing early on. But number 23, who's going to be coming in the game any moment now, Cameron Davis. He's rushed for actually a couple more yards on this season. Yeah, that's right. Cameron Davis has uh, close to 900 yards, whereas uh, Kyle Jones is just under 800. And, and there it is, Cam Davis there. Cameron Davis, the junior. Takes it down to the 26 yard line. Doing what he normally does, gets a production of above four yards. Cameron Davis had 121 yards last week against Tessero. 12 rushes for 121, including a, a, 76, a 76 yard touchdown run. Around half, around half time to actually put the game out of reach last week, so we can, uh, we won't be surprised to see another big game from Davis. There he is again to the right. Nice little seven-yard gain. By number 13, Malcolm Wilson. Nice tackle by Cathedral's Wilson. 
Stop just short of a first down, third and one for the Highlanders. The ball at the Phantom 22 yard line. All right, we're at the 22 yard line. Now, even though his rushes are less than 10 yards, production like that, every down would get you a first down by the third down each time. So any production above four yards is good production. There they are. David Baldwin with the sneak up the middle. Gain of about five. Typically those quarterback sneaks will only net you one or two yards. Right. I think he got close to seven yards on that. Yeah, it's a big line helping him push that wall forward. Hey, he is not a small quarterback by any means. He's listed at six foot four, 225 pounds, and he's only a junior. That's right. Just imagine how big this young man's gonna be next year as a senior. Cam Davis at halfback, also a junior. There's right Davis, the right. outside the tackles, he's he can go. Hole. Down at the five yard line is Cam Davis. Field. That, that looks like he comes be a, in a little late. It could be a late hit. Seven, Nico Scott. Good blocking. After those first couple plays where Upland seemed a little confused, maybe a little bit too excited for the big game, they've really seemed to shore things up on that Tony offensive Taylor line, James. Oh. Oh. Was that, was that a hold? Yeah, it was a holding okay. penalty. Uh, could be off of the receiver. Yeah, very well could have been. That flag came out pretty wide. Yeah, and typically, you know, you're you're trying to sell the play, but then the rush comes to your side, and you've got to, you know, do what you can to stop him. And that that time there, he may have held him. I'm going to look for a play action right here, and I'd like to see David Baldwin take a throw a little fade or something to number two Taj. There's a play action. Oh, Baldwin gets wrapped up behind the yeah, line I of scrimmage. I think that was not the intended play there. Um, the, once four, again, four, the fullback Tyler and uh, Baldwin having a little miscommunication and running into each other they've before had the some, play. They've had some issues early on. Yeah, before the, the play could get off, they're, you know, some, it's some confusion there on the play. This isn't very indicative of the Upland High School we've seen throughout the season. No, execution was the name of the game all season long. And, uh, you know, they, they played their hardest game against Rancho Cucamonga, who's also in the playoffs right now in the Division I. You very well could see them in the finals. There's Cameron Davis. Not much there. No, not at all. He got about not even a yard. No gain. So that's going to bring Wilson us up to about 13, third and 12. Wilson on the stop for Cathedral. The, the ball spotted right on the Cathedral 20 yard line. Interestingly, Upland's only attempted a, a couple field goal attempts all season. That's so right. we're going to see what they do here. If they, if they fail to get this conversion, it's very likely that they'll go for it on fourth down. However, both times uh, the field goals have been successful. That's a good 100 percentage on your field goals. It's just, I think that Upland has not had to make field goals. No. They just, they're With the typically dominant uh, offense. Machine. Is he going Taj's way? He escapes a little pressure. He's got number four. And he's got Bryce That's Parker. Parker. Bryce Parker's Bryce still breaks up a tackle. On his trying to get the first down. It looks like he's going to be about a short yard. Yeah. Making the reception number four, Bryce Parker. Bryce Parker. Nice job by Phenomenal Bobby athlete. This may be field goal territory. Um, typically, uh, looks, like, looks like they're bringing in the kicker, James. By yeah, 20, Coach Salter's traditionally been a little bit more conservative in past years than he has this year, but uh, I suspect he'll make the call of going to his field goal unit. And like you said, this field goal kicker, perfect two out of two on the season. <laughs> Archie Green. Small sample size, but young Archie Green, he's got one foot. Oh, looks like they're going for it. They brought him on as a decoy. And Cam Davis gets oh. his call. It looks like he's going to have enough for yeah. first down. I think he got it by about two yards. So we're going first and goal. Like I said, uh, less conservative this year than in past years with his play calling. Uh, and I think that has a lot to do with his uh, offensive coordinator, Scott Schultz. That? Schultz is a very aggressive offensive mind and when you have the athletic ability of these young Highlanders First to supplement that, ball, right, you can take more line. risks. But Cathedral give us to Kyle Jones. Kyle Jones is in for a touchdown. To in for a touchdown. Very methodic drive from 
deep inside their own territory. That's right. And that they had to work really hard for that all the way from the, what is that, five-yard line? We've seen this uh, earlier in the season where they start off a little more conservative, but as they get a little more comfortable, a little more acclimated, we, we very well could see them be a little bit more aggressive through the air as the game progresses. Right, and that's the advantage to having a balanced team and a great rushing uh, team here at that. Absolutely. When you have two running backs who are close to 1,000 yards, as well as a quarterback with the intangibles and the physical traits, that of one David Baldwin, you are able to run a very dynamic offense. And we got 7-0. to zero. And that goes to the uprights. Extra point is good. Well, that's going to bring on the kickoff team, obviously. And then in a brief moment, we're going to see sophomore sensation Bryce Young, the six foot, 190 pound throwing sensation out of <laughs> Los Angeles, the Purple Phantom. Cathedral High School, founded by Archbishop John Cantwell. The first Los Angeles Archdiocese. They have a. Uh, and it was an all boys school. It is an all boys school, and in the, it began in 1925. Oh, remarkable. It's an old school. Couple, couple notable alumni from Cathedral High School. Um, Kick is off. Former mayor of Los Angeles, An Antonio Villaragosa. Okay. Oh, let, oh, we got up to the 30 yard line on that kickoff. And driven out, right, of, driven out of bounds. At about the 32 yard line. Yeah, in addition to former mayor Villaragosa, um, the silver medalist in the 1952 Summer Olympics in none other, none other than Helsinki, Finland, in the metric mile. Bob McMillan. As impressive, impressive as some of these alumni are, perhaps none of them are more impressive than current sophomore Bryce Young. Six foot sophomore. We've got a very strange uh, formation with receivers in line behind each other. Split. Okay, Young Split back, set. throws out. Passes complete. Lipscomb Gains about a couple yards on that. Yeah. Four yard pass to Maude Lipscomb. Making the play defensively, number one, Caleb Wilkerson. Now, Cathedral likes to take to the air, as you mentioned earlier, 3,164 for the season coming into this game. Oh. Yeah, I was, I was mentioning how impressive Bryce Thanks Young's for numbers are this season. He's thrown for more than 3,000 yards, 40 touchdowns through the air, and is opposed to only three interceptions on the entire season. What a remarkable touchdown to interception ratio that is. You don't see that in the NFL these days. Yeah, as we saw there, uh, false start. Once you're on the line as a lineman, you get set. You cannot move and, and yeah, he moved just a little bit. That and moves him back five yards, and from sec second and seven, and we go to second and 12. From pistol. Oh, uh, play action. Jackson Throws on the right. run. Number 27. Yeah, oh, he breaks a tackle. First down. Breaks two tackles to get the first down. Josiah Zamora, freshman wide receiver from Cathedral. Once again, well, that's, those are those things you want to do after the catch that will get you, you know, success. Yeah. So a couple spin moves to get the first down. That, and Ross, it, you know, it would have. And Josiah Zamora is a very impressive young football player. Had close to 600 receiving yards on the season with seven touchdowns. Young from shotgun. It's driven forward. Justin Octave. Seven yard game. Tackle by number 10, Justin Flo. Ooh, number Justin Flo. Barnes. And number 51, Leonard Layout. Named uh, top three. linebacker. No huddle. Young 
all kinds of room. Oh, wow. He runs for a good 15 to 20 yards on that play. Is there, everything shifted to the left side, leaving, I'm sorry, to the to Upland's left side, to his right, and he had all the space on the left side and runs into that flat. Yeah, as impressive as Young is with his arm, he's managed more than 300 yards and 14 touchdowns on the season with his legs. So wow. he is what you consider a dual threat quarterback. Play Goes big. right down the middle. To number 12. Making the reception, number 12. Justin Kindle. Jabari Kindle. Jabari Kindle, uh, right down the middle. Once again, that a high traffic area. DBs and linebackers both may be present in that zone, and it's always scary running through there. So that's where the big collisions happen. Yeah. Cathedral started off fast. Their quarterback, Bryce Young, looks very impressive. Another handoff. Game about three yards for number 21, Justin Octave. Yeah, they're getting the call from the sideline, so it's a no huddle, and they're just going, going, going. Yeah. And see, it kind of throws the defensive off balance. Puts them in a little bit of limbo. You see this a lot in the NFL now, James. A lot of these quarterbacks. Peyton Manning made it very popular about 10 years ago. And it's interesting to see somebody right. so young running this no huddle offense. Yeah, yeah. It takes a tremendous amount of confidence and well knowing your offense very well. Yeah, wisdom, intellect, you got to study your playbook, you got to know it real well and be able to call those plays quickly and execute them. Absolutely. Penalty flag on the field. We've seen a lot of penalties so far. I think these these young players are a little bit excited for the game. Yeah. So this one's going back on Cathedral. So we'll yeah, back they up had a, five. They had a tremendous amount of momentum right now, but that's just kind of halted with that. Second down penalty. This is good for Upland. Slow down the pace, yeah. Gives them a chance to kind of reach, collect themselves. All right, get a breather. Little things like this are important for a young team. There we go. They're readjusting now. I think they've figured out what's, what they need to do. And watch as up far for as their uh, coverage. Hand off to Octave. Up the middle. Gave about five yards. Down to about the 17, 18 yard line. Tackle by number four, Bryce He's got Parker. Jukes. He and does. 50, Cathedral's Barnes. mixing it up right now. We're about 50 50 so far with the pass and the run. Both are working quite well. They got a single back. Another run up the middle. Justin Octave breaks it off to the, right. to the right. right. He's got one man to beat. He gets stuffed up. And it just short of the shy of the 10 yard line. Now this is uh, something that I think is Jack exceptional on on Upland side is the the discipline that they have in making these open field tackles that you don't see to you know you kind of see it in, in, in high school and sometimes in, right you know the, nope. the execution is not there. A short pass to number six. Ahmad Lipscomb up to about the one or the two yard line. Wow, it's dragging be... a player along. I am very impressed so far with this Cathedral Take offense. The field. Hey, they're no joke. Yeah, Upland's going to have to make some adjustments, that's for sure. A couple substitutions running that's in for the goal line defense. We have number 65 coming in, probably play a little defensive Here's tackle. Foul, That'll be Upland Brandon Arias. Defense alignment, the junior, six foot one, two hundred and sixty pounds. So half the distance to the goal with the penalty of roughing the passer. So they will be on the one yard line. Could very well see a run up the middle, whether it's from the quarterback or running back. They break. Two running back formation. Quick, quick snap. Let's see what the ref says. That looked awfully close to me, James. Yeah, one of them is saying it's an it. That's uh, a touchdown. Looks, touchdown. That's going to be seven to six with extra point coming on. Very impressive drive to start the game for Cathedral. That was, and you could see what a no huddle offense can do. It keeps the defense off balance, disorganized. And they got a lot of quick passes off, uh, and and it's not just what they do with the passing, but then what they do after the pass. And then you had uh, just great running by Octave. Great, great blocking, great running. Very, very fluid offense. 
Easy to see why they went 10 and 1 in the Del Rey That's League right. this year. Yeah, they're no joke at 10 and 1. I think that might be on the defense rushing in a little early. Just uh, mistiming. Yeah, we had play. So eager to this stop to be, the this about uh, point after. Sixth offside penalty in the first quarter. We'll see if these uh, these penalties reduce as the game goes on. These these players are awfully excited, but you have to exhibit some sort of composure because these penalties will really cost you late in the game. You're mentioning that uh, the school, based out of Los Angeles, oh, they go for two and they get stuffed. Oh. So Upland will take a seven to six lead with a minute and 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah, Speedy Octave's got 46 carries and 200 yards. It's an average of 4.4 yards per game. Yeah. He's got some juice. Yeah, we haven't seen Amari Gary yet. He's actually the Cathedral's leading runner. I'm not sure if he's playing or not. He's number 26, but they were featuring... Uh, All right, seven to six. A minute 30 left to go in the first quarter. Cathedral here lining up for the kickoff. Yeah, Upland, uh, they were a little sloppy on the opening kickoff. Yeah, the, that, those 10 games that the Phantoms won, as you mentioned earlier, came by the way of uh, Santa Fe, and there's the kick. Santa Fe, Santa Fe Springs. Chandler's got it up, and a much better return this time. Chandler got it up past the 30-yard line. Good field position to start off for Upland. So once again, that's a 25, that's a 15-yard bonus when you think about what a touchback is. Absolutely. And so we had uh, Santa Fe, Arcadia, Linwood, Harvard, Westlake, St. Paul. Some decent teams that they had to play. Yeah. Uh, LaSalle, Celsian, and St. Francis. And Red, the opponent they had in common was Redland East Valley. Who they beat last week. And they beat last week. And we, uh, Upland also played, and they had almost an identical score. Ball them back to pass, faces a little pressure. Tried to, oh, he tried to hand it off to, to get Taj. it off to, to Potts. Oh. And tried to hand it off to LaShawn Potts, the six foot four senior wide receiver. That play relatively unsuccessful. Upland looks to re gather some composure, head out to the line of scrimmage, face a second down and 10. Down. Got three receivers Nine to the loss. left, one to the right. It's that pistol. Baldwin hands off. Cameron Davis breaks a, she has a huge hole. About. And it's gonna pick up all the yards that they lost. It'll be about second and one, third and one. Nice 19 yard gain. Yeah, his knee hits uh, a yard before the first yard marker. Throwing a long yard for yeah, Cameron Davis is actually the leading rusher. He's had it close to a thousand yards on the season. You can see what, why right there. He got a little bit of blocking and he took care of the rest himself. He made about three people miss right in the middle of the field there. Davis again. This time doesn't to go pick anywhere. Up that one yard for the first down. It might be a little short. And it it might be. Well, the spot looks like it's going to be first down. Oh, they they got it. Favorable spot. I didn't think he got it upon first glance, but the referees obviously, obviously have a slightly better view than I do up here. <laughs> and it could have been a you know, forward prog uh, progress give them that first down. And so they're going to come back to the side, regroup, and figure out what they're going to do for the next 10 yards. All right, that'll take us to the second quarter. The Cathedral's defense is employing a 4-3 defense. Uh, that protects more for the rush. Uh, 
Although Upland does have a very potent rushing game, uh, they do take to the air often. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the first quarter of play. The score from Highlander Stadium at the end of one complete. Upland 7, Cathedral 6. Cathedral comes into the game nationally ranked at 468 and 48th in California. Whereas Upland is ranked number 7th in California and number 19th nationally. That's phenomenal <coughs> uh, for Upland. 19th nationally, considering all those states yeah. and all the this, uh, you know, great football teams across, across the country. Absolutely. All right. We, ha we have first and 10, Upland. Hand off. Cam Davis, Cam Davis another 10-yard gain. That's right. Once he hits a hole, if there's not somebody to, touch, to grab him immediately, he, he bursts through that, that linebacker zone very easily. Yeah, he's got an extraordinary Second vertical run. For a Highlander first down. Once he gets ahead of steam, it's hard to stop him. Out to the right goes number three, Tosh Davis. To the left, number two, LaShawn Potts. Penalty flag on the field. Yeah, that's why he averages almost 10 yards to carry on the season. And he's well into... He's at about 45 yards yeah, rushing already in the second quarter. Against Cathedral High School. Oh, legal substitution so, there. Yeah, we gave. saw some players coming in and out that Five weren't years, supposed to be there. And so that's going to result in a penalty, giving Upland an advantage. And we're going to have another penalty. Another. Might Very. be the same issue. As fluid as... As fluid as Cathedral having, looked on offense earlier. Yeah, falling apart on defense just, just by trying to figure out what their personnel is. Yeah, too many men on the field. That'll cost you 10 yards every time. I thought there was a lot of linemen in there. <laughs> All right. Oh, a little confusion. A little That's confusion. a rare throw there where he had nobody in range. Yeah. It looked like uh, David Baldwin thought LaShawn Potts was going to run to the outside, but he made a cut to the inside, which is why the ball flew where it did. All right, we have a second and ten with run, one running back. Cameron Davis gets the ball. He has one man to beat. He's at the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Upland Highlanders. Now, that's what I was talking about earlier about disciplined open field, being able to make the open field tackle. There, right there, you saw number seven, not able to do that. Uh, of course, you're going to get somebody that's lightning fast. That was a gorgeous run. That was a for touchdown. great blocking, bad tackling, and great running on behalf right. of that. That combination will net you points every time every on offense. Time. It's, everything just went Upland's way on that play. Mm, strong safety. You can see had a had a chance to right. to get him. That's it, your it, job. But That's why you're there? I mean, Cameron Davis is so fast and so big. Yeah, just a it's couple a moves and that, an extra point is good. We have a 14 to six game. It's 11 minutes to go. That'll break ankles every time. Absolutely. The score of an 11. Yeah, very well balanced offensive attack we're seeing from Upland High School so far. Pretty much what we've seen all season, but against this level of competition is all the more impressive on behalf of the Highlanders. Speaking of the Highlanders, why they seem to be called the Scots or the Highlanders. It's about 50-50. Is there any uh, reason Can behind that? Well, how they got their mascot in the first place Walker. was the the first principal of Upland High School was Scottish. Oh, okay. And Scott, you know, Scots is an abbreviation of Scotland, and they, you know, the Highlander is a natural yeah. na uh, hi uh, mascot. Yeah, and everyone, the, the name Highlander actually comes from the 1986 action film starring <laughs> that's right. Sean Connery. That's which when one? it was, that's, that's when they existed, right? All right, <laughs> number 11, oh my gosh, great play. Number six on Upland, stuffs him back at about the five yard line. What a play by. Jaden Dedman, terrific play, good. 
that's that's how you make an open field tackle. And that's how you make an open field tackle. Special teams, that's right. terrific so far. We're he, he's a, what's called a wedge breaker. The first person down the field, you got to bust through a wall of people sometimes to get to that runner. The runner was going to the outside, and he just picked him off for a huge loss. And this puts this puts the Cathedral and Bryce Young in a very difficult situation. You're backed up on your own five yard line, six yard line to be exact. There's not a whole lot of real estate back there to move around. There, even less room for air. Let's see if number six can, can make something happen. You know, Bryce Young, right. what a he's throw. Got a, and Off balance on the run. He's got a, a receiver, great, great catch, runs out of bounds. and That was a perfect throw on the run. Little out to receiver Corey Payne for what looks to be a nice eight yard run or eight yard completion. While it doesn't look very impressive in the stat book, that, that was a very big play because that yeah. got, him, got him out of the end zone. Right, out of danger. We see a halfback. And there's the Octave. And the Octave's movements no gain on the from side to side are really remarkable, but of course Upland's uh, speedy defense also able to hang in there with them. Yeah. Ho Chi looks very impressive, getting a lot of a lot of pressure up the middle there from that defensive line position. Ho Chi, a very talented defender, listed at six foot ten in the program. I think that might have been a typo, but he oh. Is that going to be inbound? Looks like he made the catch. Wow. One. This is why Cathedral is here this you game in the playoffs, because their receiving core does its job. Bryce Young has some sort of arm. Remarkable that he's and only Of course, to get that off, you have to have a, a really good line to keep your quarterback healthy and back in the shotgun. The makes, makes another. Pass left side, number 27, and Josiah Samora. Josiah Samora yeah. getting the hassled after he gets the first Tackle down. By number one, Caleb Roberson, number four, Bryce Parker. Yeah, impressive, the number, number 27 nine, receiver for Cathedral, Westman. Josiah. First and he's, a, he's a true freshman. Well, all high school freshmen are true freshmen. <laughs> but he's playing with a... They're not artificial. <laughs> so for Bryce a pistol, Young back again. Oh, finds another forward. receiver. Oh, oh. Late, late hit. That was a mistake on number 22. You can't do that. You had a good play there, but he picks him up. He slams him down. Easy call for the ref. They'll make that every time. Malik, I don't know. I, I, that, that I don't was, know if that's a, an illegal tackle. No. He's not on the floor yet. He just ref, picked him up and threw him in ref, there. <laughs> I think the ref sensed a little bit of a... Maybe it was a little a sense, extra there. A little bit extra. A little and when excited. you see feet flying in the air, that's a Those little bit of a clue that maybe uh, something was amiss. Very, very emphatic tackle to say the least from number 22, Malik Gross. And it looks like they are going to indeed enforce the uh, unnecessary roughness call, which will cost the Highlanders 15 yeah, yards. 15 yarder. And they're taking it all the way up to the 45 yard line. I think they're okay with that. I, I don't know. Yeah, think, I, I, of course, a, a 50 yard penalty is horrible, but that was just an impressive it tackle. Was, <laughs> it was fun to watch. Malik uh, Gross, down. that was a statement play right yeah, there. Yeah, it was. Well, before the game, things started getting a little chippy. You saw the, you saw the Cathedral players Stepping over the 50-yard line boundary. Oh, oh nice pass nice. off to the flat from split back. He has some sort of touch on his throw. He does. He he could gun it, and then you see him, you see him put that little touch, that little finesse on the throw. It looks like we're watching Steve Young or Dan Marino right now, not a sophomore. Perhaps related to Steve Young. Second down and four for the Phantoms. That's why he's got 3,164 yards. And 40 touchdowns <laughs> go along with uh, a mere three interceptions on the season. All right, we have second and four after that six-yard pass. Single, Single back. back. Trips to the right. Little play action. They got a he's pressure. Oh, almost oh, stacked on that. A lot of pressure that. there. Pass. They took him down hard. And that pass was uh, short, so. Who got the pressure? Ooh. That's going to take him to third and four. Caleb Robertson with some good pressure there. Takes the nice hard hit on Bryce Youngs. Altered the throw. 
throw was well short of his intended target. Caleb Robertson, a very well-mannered individual, is a student in uh, video production class. Very interesting. Young man has a bright future ahead of him, wouldn't you say? <laughs> yes, in, 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 in video and football. Uh, all right. Hard fought game so far. Yeah, a little bit more about Cathedral. Quite interesting high school. They are the Cathedral Phantoms, uh, where that nickname actually comes from. Back in the early 20s when the school was being built, they actually built it on top of an old cemetery out in L.A. And hence the name Phantoms. Got it. Not sure where the color purple comes from, but it looks terrific. <laughs> well, the Uplands used to seeing a team with purple to their rivals, Rancho, Rancho. Cucamonga, yeah, where absolutely. they had their biggest challenge this year, a D1 team, and that was a close one, a nail biter that ended in an Upland victory. That was one exciting game. All right, we are back. In action, third and four. Bryce Young out under center. Four down, Cathedral. We have Justin Octave in the backfield. Two half back set. We got Octave and Zamora back in the backfield. Zamora is typically a wide receiver, but we see him lined up next to the quarterback. So in that. I'm either halfback or fullback position. I'm guessing the little play back. fake. No, we see he's looking for some more guys got coming play. in. Oh, oh he cut. escapes. He's gonna a little, do a little lob, and there. that's gonna be an incomplete, and that's gonna bring up fourth down. Considering the amount of pressure, there's about four down linemen that got through the offensive linemen. Bryce Young still made it. Bryce Young is very shifty back in the pocket. He has some sort of awareness and presence to him that you is seldom seen with uh, quarterbacks as young as he is. Bryce Young's being looked at by a number of uh, big schools, including USC, Washington. Has yet to make his decision, which is fairly common this early in the sure. recruiting process, given that he has two more years of eligibility. He drops back, pass deflected. Turnover on downs. Who got the pressure there? That looked like That's it was. That's why you keep your hands up when you're coming in. The coaches used to stress that even if you're not going to get you keep your hands up there and something could happen. You know, you're a tall person. They have an angle uh, that they have to throw it at, and you may deflect it, and it, you saw it there. Amazing play by Bryce Parker, able to get out of reach of the offensive lineman, break through, make a play on the football, deflects it, turn over, turn over on downs, Upland High School football. We saw there Bryce Parker. Parker, if he plays Ironman football, plays both sides of the field. Who do we got? Cam oh, we got Kyle Jones. Kyle Jones rolling. Got safety. And on his feet. Ten, ten yard gain right off the bat. We're going to have a first and ten. Yeah, he's uh, Upland's version of the bus. Really hard to take down. Just bulldoze, red zone, third down kind of guy. And yeah, Kyle Jones is senior. And uh, though he's got less carries, got a grip of yards, almost to match Cameron Jones, Davis. Five foot eleven, two hundred 200 pounds, low center of gravity. He moves those legs hard. Yeah, hey, that's that's about the same stat now, Jerome Bettis had. Now we see, uh, oh, this one goes to Cam, Cam Davis. Davis. Man, he hit the hole fast. He is quick. He has a very balanced offensive attack where that uh, Upland is employing at this point of the game. They started out a little rough. And they're moving the ball with a certain amount of ease right now. Wouldn't you say, James? Yeah, probably far too easy than it should be. And, and of course, not to Phantom's liking. If you're a Phantoms fan, you'd probably want to see them slow yeah. down just a little bit. Cathedral Kevin Pearson's probably a little concerned at this point. He's had a very successful career, spanning back all the way to 2004. He's 10-1 this season. Overall, he's got a 112 win and 47 loss coaching record. Good enough for a 704 win percentage. 
you know, once again, their one loss was to Loyola. Loyola this year, uh, that's out correct. Out of Los Angeles, 17 to seven. Baldwin hands it off. Cam Davis Kyle had a hole. Kyle and Jones. He gets, it looks like a first down. It might be a, uh, it's gonna be a yard short of the first down. The upland line has sure uh, shored up any any difficulties they were encountering early on in the game. They are looking very fluid right now. Yeah, that's a big line there. I mean, these these talented running backs don't need the largest of holes to run through, but when you're getting six foot holes, it you're making it a little too easy for these <laughs> these young men. Cathedral's gonna have to start maybe uh, dialing up a couple different blitz packages just to disrupt this offensive attack we're seeing. Well, uh, they got something yeah. there. I've seen, you know, through the season, this is probably the best we've seen as far as rush defense. Yeah. Uh, and that's probably because they're in a playing a 4-3. And they, they'll put five, six guys up in the box. Yeah, we're seeing the line. Seeing the linebackers playing back quite a bit. I, I see him inching a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage now with the uh, the rushing success that Upland's having so far. And yet again, we have both. Right, we've got we got six guys. Kyle on Jones the line. in the backfield and middle linebacker up onto oh, the line. There he is, another hole. And that's, that's the danger of having so many people up in the line that there's no one behind, no second level to stop that run you know because from back there you're able to see the running back come to a glad gap you know the, the, in this case is the b gap and look you know you you want to be able to make the adjustment but if you're right up on that line you can't make that adjustment you're going straight through and you don't you don't have a second level yeah that's a very good point and Elfland's not making it very easy on them they're kind of forcing them to play too close yeah so this is going to open things up for well i'm assuming it will for david baldwin at some point in this game same defensive I, call there. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see a play fake, again, play action pass, team. and go deep. Take a shot in the end zone Tied to Taj Davis. Sure, we haven't seen much out of Taj Davis today, and uh, he's typically down. a big player. Yeah, line. number two. We're, yeah, we're already deep into the second. Yeah, I don't think he has a single catch yet at this point, but on the season. Cam Davis, Davis again. Picks up a couple, maybe gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Takes it down to the initial line of scrimmage. Tackle by number 36, Logan Applewhite. So Redlands East Valley, the team that they had in common, uh, Upland played, and both times it, Redlands scored 26 on both teams. Uh, up, uh, Upland just a slight advantage, 47 versus um, what. Uh, Cathedral had at 43. Okay. Taj Davis. Davis finally Taj gets his Davis. hands on the football and he immediately makes a big play. Breaks two tackles, gets all the way up to the 11 yard line. And that's what we're used to seeing out of Taj Davis. Yeah, I think we were both feeling like he's due. He's, he's, due. <laughs> he's, he's overdue. And you can see right there. And prediction correctly made there as he gets a, a big pass to get him the right. first down. Yes. More than a thousand yards receiving on the season, 47 receptions, and a 12, an impressive 12 touchdowns. And so, again, another junior. This team is. And there's Cam yeah. Davis. Uh, gave him about two yards. Upended. But upended going forward, so that'll get him a couple yards. So Upland got here by way of uh, La Harbra, uh, who was also in the playoffs, who, who's been ousted. Uh, Claremont, a crosstown rival, uh, that ended in a 62 to 3 victory. Redlands East Valley, La Mirada, Great Oaks, Rancho Cucamonga. Right. Hand off to Cam Davis. He gets stuffed at the line. No gain this time. That's going to bring us to about third and seven. After that, they had Chino Hills, Etiwanda, and their last game was against Los Osos. A 56 to 7 victory there. And then the first round of the CIF playoffs last week was against Tesoro here at home, which is out of Rancho Santa Margarita. Oh. And uh, that was a 59 to 12 victory. So Upland's used to rolling on teams in the first and second quarter. Uh, they would by now have like 20, yeah. 21, 28 points. They were up 21 to zero before the end of the first quarter last week. Yeah, first quarter. So this is a, a much slower start for Upland. 
but they are playing uh, very reminiscent of the Rancho game. Incomplete. That'll bring us to fourth and seven. Yeah, there was nothing there and triple coverage. Yeah, I don't, to I'm Todd not sure. Davis. I'm not sure what Baldwin was seeing there, but luckily uh, the ball wasn't near any Cathedral players to make any sort of play on it. Yeah, it seems in, in that circumstance. When, you, when I see a play like that, I feel like the the play was set to go to Taj Davis, and he just was animate about going to it because that's what the play called for. Exactly. You got to make some adjustments when you see a triple coverage like that. He didn't. He didn't check down any of his other options. Right. But at the very least, he was able to throw the ball away without turning it over. That's uh, probably something you see more in high school than you see in the college. Kick is up, and it's good. We got a 17 to 6 Upland High School lead. Uh, 341 remaining in the second quarter. Archie Green gets to do what he does best and gets a field goal, his, his third field goal for the season. What's his percentage now? Exactly, gets 100%. Wow, you don't get any better than that, James. Right. I'll play but they're not, I think they may include um, extra points. Yeah, in those stats, and I don't think he's 100% there. He's made several. With a high-powered offense like, like Upland's exhibited all season, it's not very necessary to kick field goals. But when his name's called, he's done very well. All right, Upland set for the kickoff. Cameron Walker kicking off for Upland. Cameron Walker will be kicking off. 11, Dylan White. And number 18, Aaron Howard. Aaron Howard and Dylan Wright are back to receive the kickoff for Cathedral. Kickoff taken at the 10-yard line by number 11, Wright. He's taken Dylan down at the 30-yard line. Back Just shy of the 30-yard line. line. That'll bring back sophomore Tyler, sensation Bryce Young. Number 22, Malik Goss. And Their last possession, they were uh, held up at midfield and had to turn the ball over on downs. Upland's defense made a terrific stand after allowing a couple big plays to their uh, to the opposition. Just to check back on Ar Archie Green's stats. So yeah, he was two for two in field goals, but he, had, he was 51 out of 57 on point afters. Not a bad percentage. Not at all. Octave right. hits that hole hard to the right side between the, the tackle and receiver. Yeah. Octave with a, about a five-yard gain. That's going to bring us up to second and five. So many terms. The, the, uh, tackles is used for so many different things. Uh, you know, it's a position and it's an action. Right, Young. Oh, 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 pass yeah. drop by number That's 50. That's a rare drop Alex Cathedral. Franco. You got to catch that, Franco. That's right, right in your hands. That's and not going to. That would have been a huge play. Yeah. We saw Young escape the pocket, escape a little pressure, and he rolled out to his throwing side. And yeah, Franco, a did a, Franco, Franco did a very nice job of finding a little opening. Yeah, there was and nobody was there. Nobody there. But unfortunately, he couldn't make the catch, and it was right. It hit him right in the hands. He wishes he had that one back, obviously. And he might get it here. They've got okay. that, that strange caterpillar split receiver. Yeah, that's just intended to confuse the defensive backs a little yeah. bit. That might get the first you down there. Now, of course, these teams do a tremendous amount of preparation. I know that they were <laughs> watching a lot of film on the teams and you know that's that's why you don't sometimes you don't see all the plays that they're gonna do during the season you Absolutely. gotta keep a little bit for your playoffs you may practice them but you don't show them until until the game time and it looks they, like that one there i think they've seen before yeah they're ready for that Young's trying to draw them off size oh big hit right oh, there that's gonna be a penalty a little bit little bit of contact right there with, we're going to see a, a rough in the passer. Uh, we got a late Adelaide. hit. That was a huge hit. Yeah, there's also a little contact with uh, number six, uh, Jaden Dedman in the receiver, but Upland's going to get knocked with a uh, rough in the pass. That's going to cost them 15 yards in the first down. Again, Upland being a little bit too excited on some of those plays. Granted, you're a young team. But in big moments like this, roughing the passer is unacceptable as you're essentially allowing 
Cathedral to move past midfield, especially when you have them on the ropes. They had them at third right. and four. That's this right. is not the first time we've seen them kind of shoot themselves in the yards. foot. Yeah. yeah. So now we got another shotgun formation. We have Justin Octave in the backfield. Bryce Young. He's about five yards behind the center. He's going to get the snap any second here. And he fakes it over to Octave. He throws. And he's got Catch made by Octave. Nice little 10 yard gain. Very nice looking play. Very speedy. That's move. the momentum uh, you do not want to give your opponent with those silly penalties. And how tall is he again? Are we talking about Octave? Right? Octave, he's about five foot, five foot nine on paper. He's yeah, not he quite may, as tall as yeah, your quarterback. He may, not be, he, he may be a little shorter than he's, that. He's built though. He yeah, is not a little guy by any very means. Very fast. I'd, but you can see a height difference between him and his lineman. Absolutely. Uh, but he's very slippery. I expect um, Upland to start pressuring Young here. And, and they do. There That's, is. Oh, there's the throw. They got to be careful. Throw. They almost got another. Yeah, a lot yeah. of contact yeah. there, but. But he, that was they, on the throw. The hit so was administered as the throw was right. released from his hands. And, and that's the difficult part when you're playing, you're going so fast. You know, you're going full speed into something and to pull up, and you're not even sure, you know, you are you aware that the, that he's let go of the ball yet or yeah. is it still in his hand? And it's, especially if you got a target area, you might be just looking at his legs. I know uh, when I played, you know, I'm crawling getting up half the time i see legs and i grab them yeah you know, they're coming towards it's a very me. a very instinctive <laughs> yeah process oh quick handoff to the fullback number 44. that might but be that a play, holding we're, oh no it's a false start against cathedral. cathedral yeah they had the first down there that was a good looking play but somebody's a little jumpy on the offensive line there that's gonna move them from third and one they're gonna go to third and six that's actually a pretty significant play at this juncture yeah, this penalty, these penalties just keep piling on. Yeah, I'd have to say we're up close to about 15 to 16 penalties so far combined with both teams. Yeah, both teams. I mean, you don't see that too often from Upland, a very, typically a very disciplined team. Very. I think uh, one thing that they could take pride in this year was the fundamentals. One of the many things to take pride in from this yeah. number 19 nationally ranked team. Oh, we see Bryce Young. Passing complete. That's gonna be a little low. Another, another, another good pass. These receiver. That's Franco again. Yeah, he, he had to scoop that one that's up. A, I mean, he it it got there. That's and, two. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're a high quality receiver, you got to get those. Yeah. And you can't deliver a much better ball with that amount of pressure that right, you're facing. Right. I mean, and the space you got to throw it into. Granted, it wasn't a perfect throw, but when you have a linebacker in your face and you make a throw that's relatively close to your receiver's then, hands then you got you depend on your receivers to get absolutely it. so they are not doing their young quarterback any favors at this point Bryce Young may be a little frustrated he moves out a lot of pressure. pressure he's going Each down time. he's still on his feet yeah so that's a big wow. break for yeah. Bryce Young Bryce Young breaks about two tackles and makes a perfect 23-yard pass. Yeah, Justin Flo comes in untouched. He's unable to bring him down. I was so enamored with Bryce Young's athletic ability there that I didn't realize that uh, the receiver had become right open, number 12. Yeah, it was number 12, uh, Jabari Kindle. Good awareness on Kindle's part, too. He, he had to abandon his route given the uh, broken play, and he found a nice spot in the field where he's able to make a big play. Four receivers and oh, give the off. Off. No. Bryce Young. Bryce, Bryce, he oh, he. Bryce Young put his head down on that. Yep. He's not afraid to take a hit. You like to see that out here. to Octave, and he runs to the left parallel to the line. Yeah, Octave is out, actually listed at five foot eight, 160. Yeah, he's, he's a little short on the shorter side, but that little running back is built. Bryce Young, the quarterback. Bryce Young, he finds his Jabari yeah, Kendall. Again. He's down at the one yard line. Uh, Another a, terrific read. But that's a good stop to prevent the touchdown. Yeah, it's Although we'll first, see. First we'll and goal on the one. Here. Yeah, first and ten. 
Uh, we've seen Bryce Young make a handful. I'm oh, sorry, first and goal. Yeah, first and goal on the <laughs> one yard line. And it looks like there's some sort of flag. Upland might have too many men on the field. Yeah. Half the distance to the goal, but when you're on the one yard line, fairly insignificant. Yeah. So they might be an inch closer than they were before. I'd expect some sort of quarterback sneak. I don't see oh, Bryce Young rolling out of the pocket it, when you're this close and to the goal uh, line. It, I would guess it would be a run through the A or B gap. Absolutely, or just straight up the middle, quarterback sneak. Just more and more we see Bryce Young playing this game, we, the more and more impressed he leaves us. Um, he's faced several third and fourth down situations, and he seamlessly breaks tackles. Now makes we people miss. Is that a delay? It, who? It looks like this one's on Upland. No, we have a. That could be an off. No, that's a timeout on Cathedral. Yeah. I thought that was a flag. That wasn't a flag. <laughs> that would have been. That would have yeah. been big development there. Timeout but. on the field. All right. By Cathedral. Seventeen to six with forty-six to go in the first half. Second quarter, I should say. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that everyone please keep the So this has been a storied there. season for so Upland. Um, after coming off a year with uh, Division One competition last year, having to play both St. John Bosco and Modern Day Ranch Cucamonga, uh, top you. teams in the country. And they were predominantly, a lot of the starters, a lot of the major key players were sophomores that you're seeing here today. Uh, Taj Davis. Uh, David Cam, Baldwin, David Ca Baldwin, uh, Cameron Davis, uh, Justin Flo today um, is the leading li uh, linebacker for the state, and right, he's only a sophomore. That's Justin that's Flo, impressive. Phantoms, the are set. Solid player development. All right, first of they one. They come on the field looking to play. Yeah, Bryce Young under center. Expect something quick up the middle. He goes up oh, the middle. The he's in. That's quarterback sneak. That's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what took the ref so long on that one. He got in easily. I saw from here, and it took him eight yeah. seconds. But I guess at this state, you want to. Uh, yeah, there was a big sure. shoving match that yeah. took a little time there. But uh, yeah, he did find the seam and get through. Yeah, things getting a little tense, but that was a clean sneak, and they're most likely going to go for two. Let's see. There's a little confusion on Cathedral's part. Coaches are screaming. And it looks like Bryce Young is going back out to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they might. And they're going to try to two back. Oh, absolutely. They want to make this. Oh, they're going to talk about that 10. a little bit. Uh, so they're going to go to timeout. timeout. While they're at timeout, I'd like to talk. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Main Street Garage over here in Upland. The owner John Tarrant runs that place. Uh, Great place. Toyota Tech originally, but they also do other cars as well. They're very great at uh, body, they used to, they came from a body work background, now they're um, doing all kinds of work, great stuff for their Main Street garage. Uh, also, Veronica Gras, uh, her generous support, a uh, real estate agent. Oh, uh, one of the best. And uh, we also have One Up Graphics. One Up Graphics, one of the best Rancho. Yeah, Rancho Cucamonga, one of the better graphic okay. design studios. That's right. You'll come Coming around. Right For all your signing needs and wrapping, you know, they can wrap vehicles and whatnot. Absolutely. Which is a terrific a cool, sponsors. Cool way to go. All right, Bryce Young going for two. Try to make it a three-point game. He's back with the shotgun. Right Quick pass. Right. That open. is. Oh, he drops the ball. Oh. Another drop. Another by a drop. phantom receiver. Yeah. The throws are there. He's made a couple great so plays to get him. I mean, that that last drive, uh, he was primary on number twelve. Jabari Kindle. Jabari Kindle. Yeah, another and, but, big drop. Uh, on that one, he, he was open too. There's no yeah. coverage. On them. Not that Upland needs it at all, but they are getting a couple breaks here with these uh, yeah. these drop passes. That's blown coverage on on Upland. I mean, they just got lucky there. Yeah, and you don't want to give a t team like Upland any any more opportunities. That's right. No advantages needed for these guys whatsoever. Yeah, because Upland doesn't make too many mistakes, and so you got to capitalize on those. Okay, that'll bring us to 40, just a tick under 40 seconds left in the half. We'll see a kickoff. Might see some sort of squib kick. I don't think they want to risk anything big. Sure. And number 24, David Chandler. Yeah, Cathedral's kicker, um, Jose Nunez. Nunez. I'm not sure if Nunez can kick.
kick a touchback, that would yeah, be a Yeah, he way hasn't to go. so far. He's been about 10 shorts, both the opportunities and. And we see a right slight squib. Uh, not Good not a bad kick. Goes right he's to his hands though. Oh, he's and got a hole. And there, there. Oh, wow, he's got the kicker to That's beat. That's what he was worried he about. He is back. That's exactly what Upland needed at this stage. 30 seconds to go, and you get yourself a kick return for a touchdown. 23-12 Highlanders. That's exactly what we're talking about. Uh, you you got to plan your kicks very carefully because something dangerous can happen right before the half, just like that. He goes was that 95 yards to pay dirt. Was that That's Devin a, Chandler? I believe so. It took one bounce right into his hands. Yeah. And uh, full speed ahead. Great he wasn't, blocking there. He was not touched. Terrific no, blocking. And there, there was nobody there really, except maybe the, the kicker had a chance at it. but. No, he kicker was blocked. Had no chance. It was clean. There was no uh, it, back, you know, in the back uh, blocks. I don't think Jose Nunez, Cathedral's terrific kicker, has uh, tackled many running backs <laughs> running full speed this season. So can't <laughs> give, can't put too much blame on him. But now we had a player here a couple years ago, uh, Luke Van Ginkle, who was uh, the top weightlifter for the team, and and. California State top bench press record holder. Wow. Uh, or lifter, and um, he was the kicker. Yeah. And so when he, he made, made a that hit, tackle, yeah. I don't think I don't think Jose Nunez is going to go to the Olympics for any weightlifting competitions. Maybe not. <laughs> but uh, maybe with his legs. I uh, maybe with his legs. Cathedral's got to get some more pressure. They got to split some gaps on that uh, that kick return. There is actually this great special teams play there. Um, and, and Upland's been doing a great job on special teams. That's another factor, an X factor of this team is the special teams. Being able to make big plays on the kicks and as well as, as defending those. Yeah, I mean, that. I mentioned just before the, the kickoff that uh, they might, they might want to, Cathedral might want to think right. of doing a squib and prevent right. that and then. Right. And, and there it is. And they're going yep. for two now. Baldwin has the guy. Oh, he got it. It was deflected. Bryce Parker. Bryce Parker's able to make the reception. We've called his name on defense. There he is getting a big catch for a two-point conversion. And that's going to really hit the momentum yeah. of, of fan, the Phantoms, which have been trying to do that the past couple times. And Upland does it with these there. I mean, there's so many weapons on this Upland team that to beat you with. And... And we're seeing that right now. I mean, whether or not it's on kick return, on special teams, on a two-point conversion, you see a more of a defensive player make a terrific play like that. And then your usual suspects in Cameron Jordan and Kyle Jones and David Baldwin consistently making plays. This Upland team is going to be difficult to beat. And you just can't give them the opportunities that Cathedral has given them at this point. Yeah, whoever wins here will be playing next week after Thanksgiving. Oh. On the Friday nice. after Thanksgiving. And that for Upland will likely be an away game. Who would that be between? All right. All right. I believe that would be between uh, Norco or Charter Oak. Uh, and nice squib kick. Arm tag makes a man miss, but they look like to tackle the return man at about the 39 yard line. So of course Upland doing as you suggested a squib kick to ensure that uh, you've got enough people getting to the play yeah. and uh, they did miss a tackle but Justin not giving Flo it to your fastest players. Justin Flo was able to make a nice little play there. It, that had the potential to be something a little bit more but Upland uh, recuperated well after missing an early tackle and uh, stopped them short of midfield which is exactly what you want to do with 17 seconds to go but with a quarterback like Bryce Young I mean there still is some time yeah, on you the, never know on the and, clock. And, and, and with their passing attack Upland's of course they're gonna come with the split nice. uh, offense now cover three formation Upland's employing Octave gets the ball gets about nice little run yeah it keeps on his feet uh, for an extra couple of yards. Oh, so. That looks like they're just going to... Are they taking it to the half? Yeah, that'll be half. So we got a 25 to 12 in what's been an entertaining game so far. Should be a little bit closer, but Cathedral giving up that big 
kickoff return for a touchdown. Puts them in a bigger hole than they needed to be in at this point. 25-12, we're gonna go to the half and we'll see you in the second. That's it for halftime here at Highlander Stadium. The score at the end of two complete. Upland 25, Cathedral 12. Awesome. The business today is Main Street Garage. Um, it was originally established about 25 years ago as Toyotech. We, we were really heavily domestic. Pretty much anything, we can fix just about any car on the road. So usually you bring your car in, it, it's got a problem. We're gonna look at it. We'll spend up to an hour looking at it for free. Nobody makes an appointment. Nobody plans on crashing their car. So really what I bring from the body shop business is sensitivity. Now bring my boys in Their skin and craters like the moon The moon we love like a brother Riley goes through the moon Dancing around the lies we tell Dancing around the guys as well Even the comatose They don't dance and tell We live in cities You'll never see on screen Not very pretty but we show them We have 30 seconds before the second half is going to start here. Uh, it's Cathedral versus Upland, the Phantoms and Highlanders. We've got uh, a CIF play, re, playoff round two. We up, have our captains tonight, uh, Upland. Elijah Klein, Andre Barnes, Corey Thomas, and Tavoy Hochi. Oh. Yeah, Upland's got a nice 25 to 12 lead heading into the third Burns quarter here. Burns and uh, who they would Please be playing next would either be Edison or Oaks Christian 
Uh, Ed is in having a better right, of that right now at uh, 14 to 6. Oh, what, what quarter are they in? I believe they're at half. Okay. So two good teams. So regardless of who wins that game, Upland's going to have their hands full next week. It'll so, be the day after Thanksgiving yeah, at 7.30 Friday. p.m. And, and no matter what the outcome of this game is, it'll be away for uh, either team at, at Edison or Oaks Christian. Nice. 61 degrees right now at the beginning of the third quarter with an eight mile wind blowing slightly northeast. Might affect the kicks slightly, but since either of these teams kick very it, much, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that doesn't seem like it's going to be much of an issue. Uh, I don't think that, now this is great weather if you're an athlete on the field. You know, you got all that equipment on. And Back team to receive the kickoff. This is going to bother you. This is ideal. In fact, uh, I ran over Allie to the restroom Trimble. and I'm, I'm actually Kicking pretty off. warm now. Number four I ran six. there, sprinted back. Cameron and I want to take my jacket off, but uh, yeah, oh. if you're a player there, you're probably, this is probably comfortable weather. All right, our kickoff. He sends it. To the, uh oh! To yeah, illegal can't, procedure. Yeah, you can't kick yeah. it out of bounds on the kickoff. Kick it, it must be an automatic 35-yard penalty. Cathedral's going to be up at the 35-yard line to start the third quarter. Yeah, Bring it's him. a huge bonus uh, considering typical touchback is uh, it's, it typically it, you know you see in the pros often it ends up in the end zone. That's a 20-yard, uh, which we call a touchback. All right. So we see. Uh, that brings... Oakland coming out with their usual 3-4 defense. Bryce Love, looks like he's in a nice single back pistol formation. He's got his favorite running back, Justin Octave, right. behind him. Single back, we call this a pistol formation. Little, uh -oh. little Octave picks up the blast. Yeah. Oh, he's goes looks down goes down to his feet. Good job of eluding the tackler there. That might be uh, uh, the pressure and get rid of the pass incomplete. The wherewithal to stay on your feet that in that circumstance. Normally, normally in the pro, uh, that might be intentional grounding. Now that was thrown in the dir general direction. He was off balance. As long as there's a receiver there. Then you're you're okay. I mean, I I know I've driven the point across multiple times so far, but just the uh, the overall awareness of uh, of Bryce Young yeah. has been exceptional to this point. Oh, nice pass, but a little bit pass wide right. Jabari Kindle Jabari was about Kindle. six yards away from that ball. On the One of the rare misfires we've seen from Bryce Young That's all right. night. He's been pretty pinpoint. T actually, it's actually yeah. been his uh, receivers letting him down most of the night. Right there. Just Bryce, just, a hair. just off target. You don't see that very often from this young quarterback. And it's, and it's tough as a, in that, that position. A quarterback, you get hurried, and you see you know, somebody running towards the trajectory, you try to get it just in front of that person, and you just have to have a great timing and awareness of your receivers to get that pass just right. Absolutely, James. That brings us to third and ten. Bryce Young, he throws it down. Oh, Alex Franco comes up with a nice 13-yard gain. Right, we saw a couple of drops by him earlier. It's a critical drop. There he is, uh, making up for those. Big play there for first down. Yeah, Al, you saw Alex Franco make a couple big drops mid-second quarter. Cost his team probably a touchdown, but that was a nice, clean, crisp route. He ran to the outside. Even better catch. Shovel pass. Octave is tackled by about 17 off. Defense alignment. <laughs> he had nowhere to go there. there. But what do we do? We have some more. We have a penalty here. This could be a hold, or this could be possibly another unnecessary Possible roughness. Let's, let's listen. Chandler, uh, they 50, look like they're going to go backwards, so I think they know it's on them. Yeah, there's a hold there. Broken play from the start. I don't like that play call one bit from Cathedral. I mean, you have the quarterback who could throw the ball down the right. field. You're trying to t trick a team when you're down by. 13 points at this point. No need for that. Just and drop this back. Is not the type of defense. To do nah. That with. There's five people in Octave's face right away. That play was going nowhere from the start. Now Upland once again deploys a 3-4 defense. It's three linemen and four linebackers. Linemen are typically lined up head to head with uh, rather than in the gap uh, of the offensive line. And we saw. And we see on the other side they go with the 4-3, uh, where the the linemen actually line up in the gap. Yeah, and we saw number 60, Ho Ching, one of their, their best overall six. defensive players. He blew that play right up from the start. He just completely moved the guard out of the way, and he met That's right. the running back. 
with, oh, but big throw. Oh, oh, we got a fumble, that's, big fumble. Upland, up number one picks it up. Caleb Roberts, he's, he's, got, he's got one man to beat. He's taking he's this one to the house. He's, he's down to the five yard. Caleb Robertson, fumble recovery, returns it 50 yards to the one yard line. Upland is relentless, they do not quit. Wow. And so once that, a, that a, a would have been a big play by the Phantoms. It's disrupted by the fumble. And Caleb Robinson with the wherewithal to pick it up. Runs to his left side with great blocking to get all the way down to the five yard line. Big play for and Upland's defense. Same old story. Once again, we see the wide receivers letting down the talented young quarterback once again. Caleb Robertson, once again, uh, I've got a little bit of bias as he's in my class in the first and second period. Oh, third period, sorry. Give him an A. <laughs> no homework right for two there. months, third big period. play. In fact, I'm going to give him a whole week off next week. I mean, growing up, they tell football players to fall on the ball when you're trying to recover fumble, but when you're as athletic as Caleb Robertson, right. you pick that ball up and run. And, and you see some opening there. Yeah, and you have, a, you have a talented team behind you who knows how to pick up blocks, and he runs pretty much untouched up until about the 10-yard line there. Almost breaks it for a touchdown. I thought he was going. Off, and we got Kyle Jones, Jones up to the two-yard line. Touchdown. Oh, he broke through. It looked like that play was down, but he's, he's strong. He's leg shuffling, and there he goes into the end zone. Kyle it's Jones. A, it's very hard to take down. Kyle Jones and Cam Davis. Cam Davis. That's a very formidable dual threat running co back combination. You don't see too much in high, at the high school That's level. Right, right. Typically, you have a one your, most high schools would be fortunate to have one of these guys. You choose your poison. That's the difference between uh, public school and private school. Cathedral is, uh, you know, schools like Modern Day and Alameda, they have the opportunity of recruiting and having people come from all over the place come to their school. As you know, with public school, they're restricted to their local area, and so the players have to be from that area. And, and while we have a, a rather large high school with yes. a school of 3,500 students, and so that allows for you know a, a larger pool of players. And with the reputation they have, if you're looking to go to a D1 school, um, you might look to one of these schools that have a tradition of sending kids to college uh, due to their their program. They send several students to large Division One schools each year. As a matter of fact, just below us in the press box, we have none other than. Kenny uh, Lawler. Kenny Lawler, grad, uh, wide receiver, class of 2012, went on to play at the University of California, Cal, Berkeley. Right. Was current Los Angeles Rams quarterback Jared Goff's favorite target over at Cal. He went on to be drafted by the San Diego Chargers, and then he played briefly with the Seattle Seahawks, enjoyed some moderate success in the National Football League. And that just goes to show you the type of player, the caliber of players that a school like Upland is able to attract on a year-to-year -year basis. And while you will continue to see more and more go to formidable Division I schools. Yeah, this year, players, I can see a lot of players here today that we may see in the NFL in the future. I think you got a couple here. This is one of those magical years. Number 35, Jose Nunez. Almost unprecedented. Taking at the 8-yard line to 20. All right. Kick off up to the 25-yard line. So now... Cathedral's going to have to start throwing the ball pretty much every play from here on out now that they are down by 20 points, three touchdowns. Now I say a precedent because uh, the freshman team, the JV team, and varsity team all are celebrating baseline league champions this year, that which, is, which I haven't seen since I've been here. The school has a lot of depth at the skill positions, at the defensive positions. Tremendous job of coaching. That's right. And they've been, this has been a group that's been together for a long time. Coach, uh, yes, and Coach, Coach Salter has been here for since 2004, and his record is quite remarkable. Yeah, since 2004. We're going to see a false start from Upland, and that's going to give five yards to Cathedral. Offsides, five-yard penalty against Upland. First and five. Yeah, Coach Salt has been here since 2004. He has a record of 130. Oh, that was it down. By number 22. That looked like a great pass. Go to number 27. And, and he had room to run after the catch, but then he got batted down. Great defense awareness. Get his hands yeah. up there. Favorite target freshman Josiah Samora almost had that, but defensive backs able to make a quick 
play directly to the ball and break that up before anything could happen. I mean, Bryce Young's still delivering strikes. His receivers are not helping him out with the drop passes and the fumble on the last possession. They've dug themselves in a hole that no other team this season has been able to dig out of. Back to pass. So he escapes some pressure. Yeah. Outside the tackle, he throws it away. Get rid of it quick. Getting a little chippy oh, and upland again. No, I think this one's going to go on Cathedral uh, for an extra shove after uh, the, the defensive player. I think yeah. Justin Flo is trying to get off of Bryce Young. Flo looked there might go against Cathedral. Yeah, that is going against Cathedral. I thought it looked like Flo might have gotten a little extra it's shove in, but. Against Cathedral. Yeah, so the, player, so the Cathedral player was uh, pushing. And that's the flow off, and and he's called for the penalty. So that's going to make it third and long for Cathedral, in an already insurmountable deficit which they are facing. Right. And, well, I'll tell you one thing: uh, Bryce Young is going to need a lot more time to to deliver any passes because Upland is right in his face they pretty much every. Very I think uh, the offensive it, line for Cathedral is getting tired at this point. His his speed and awareness that is I've been very impressed with number six, coaching. Uh, he's he's blowing up the offensive line pretty much every single play, making it extremely difficult to run any significant routes. Right, he's got great technique there. Very low center of gravity. And speaking of technique, we were talking about gaps earlier. On the offensive side, for those of you new to football, uh, the running backs run through gaps, the, the defense. We call those techniques. You have uh, uh, the direct in front of you or the left or right. So you have the zero technique, one technique. And the, the even numbers are typically directly in front of the player's odd numbers in the gaps. All right, third and 20. Just up. You got Josiah Zamora lined up on the outside, number 27. Excuse me, he is in the slot. Seems to be a little confusion with the Cathedral offense. Bryce Young's looking to his coaching staff on the sideline there. He gets the ball. He runs Good. to his right. Rolls right. Gets off a big throw. He's got his guy complete. Wide open. Wide open. He's got a big move. He is down at the 20-yard line. That is good enough for a 60-yard completion. We have, there are two penalty flags. I'm not sure if that's going to be a hold or a roughing the passer. That could be a, I think it's going to be a holding that, because uh, he yeah, everyone. was wide open on his throw. So it had to be a lineman that uh, was preventing, preventing him from uh, getting tackled. And uh, that throw, was, that was a massive throw. And but a perfect throw. But the I'd like player to is being called back. comment on the, yeah. the DBs there, break, making a good breakdown. Like oftentimes, a defender will over pursue missing that tackle. What you want to do is break down in Holding front of the receiver and make sure that he doesn't get anywhere. And then there was time for the other receivers to or the other DBs to come up and make a tackle there. That could easily be a touchdown if uh, the defense doesn't have the fundamentals to break down and slow down. The yeah. De another devastating penalty. That was a huge play. 60 plus yards. Got them all the way to their 20 yard line. Ball spotted at the six yard yeah. line. Inst instead of first third down at, at the 20 yard line, you are at third and 20, right. third and 30 at the three yeah, yard line. You suspect, we were just talking about Hochin um, going off the, the outside, the right side of the tackle. Um, I believe that's the nine technique. We're talking about techniques there. And he's, he's going through there and you, we're talking about him blowing up the play each time. At that time, you know, there was nobody around there. Right. And, and Mike's suspect. Right, Shung back in his end zone, gets the ball off, complete. gets it over He's to Octave. Octave breaks the tackle. Like I said, really Oct slippery. Nice job by number 21, Justin Octave. All right. Now, are they going to punt with third and tackle 20? Number 10, Justin Flo. Fourth and 20. And number 25, yeah, Gavin with, uh, Scott. Yeah, because there is a really dangerous territory to be. That is correct. For fourth down on. Absolutely. It's a long way to Crazy go. things happen in high school, but not even, even at this point is Cathedral even considering to go for it. You Give, just got to hope that you're, you got to put trust in your defense and hope that they could hold it and put you back in this yeah. game. Yeah, fourth and 29 on is the, not an ideal situation when you're down by three touchdowns. Nunes. Back team to receive if, you, the if you went fourth down and you didn't make it. Then you're giving the ball up to 
Upland at their 20. Yeah, that was a huge holding penalty. He's back to punt. He gets it off, but that is a short punt. That only goes about 20 yards. So that ball's only going to be at the punt. That's going to be an upwards 47 yard yeah, line. So, without even touching the ball, not bad field position for Upland. Yeah, Upland has, yet again, some good field position. Yeah, Upland has completely worn down this team in the second half. They look a little bit, they look exhausted. Uh, Upland, I expect a quick score here. Yeah, and that will really put a dagger into their hopes. Uh, Phantoms, the Phantoms, the Phantoms hopes. There's always next year, Phantoms. You got a good young quarterback. Well, the game's not over yet. I know. <laughs> it's a high formation. All right, they're going to be running the ball here. I would like. I think it's going to Kyle Long here. We saw this exact formation. Uh, uh, Davis. Davis. Cam Davis. And a yard, right a yard maybe. No need to air it out at this point when you're up by three scores. Number 44, Tyler Morrison. Number 42. Cathedral is all over that. Jabril. Yeah, he they're, ran it. They're off their defense. Also, looks like number it's three, designed Jimmy Shannon for that play, which is very tackle. common in high school. No gain, second down um, and ten. You know, a lot of Hall high school. Has a call from a we'll sideline. Go with the run. The ball and, spotted at the Cathedral it's 37 much play to go line. by Than trying to try to throw it. Yeah, throw it, you risk. You run the risk of talent. interceptions it's if you're throwing it at this point. Right. Oh, he play. Play fake. Baldwin gets the ball to Tyden Ford to left side to get a first down. Takes the ball 13 yard gain. To number nine, Trevon Ford. Nice 13 yard play action fake. Little swing route to the outside. Baldwin's able to find him for an easy first down. That's the fascinating thing about watching this quarterback having being left handed. Tackle by number seven, so easily on that left side. Number 32, Cedric Jones. As are the Jason majority Jones of humans. The yeah, ball right. the but it, why, right? joking line. aside, that ball comes out with some serious zip. Yes. Tyden Ford, the ball carrier. Oh, Ford gets the ball again. He rumbles for a good eight yard gain. On that, everything looks on like a champion on the right side. He goes Howard. to the left. Number 42, uh, between the guard Khalil tackle Jabril. on one side. And, uh, he's able to pick up a uh, grip of yards. Good, good play calling. A lot of Cam seven, Davis and Kyle seven, Williams require so much attention, and you slip your fullback right up the middle there. Forward, sophomore running back. Not much the Cathedral right defense can do at this Davis. point. Deshaun Fox comes out to the right. Right now, most important thing for Upland High School is ball security and, and preventing any sort of turnovers, Davis. but he is blown up behind. The exchange from the quarterback brought down. Big hit. Outstanding defensive play by Cathedral. Cathedral linebacker. Oh, right there. By number 44, Tyler Morrison. Yeah, Tyler Morrison just, he he burst through that defensive line untouched. And Cameron Davis, unfortunately, paid the price on that one. He might have to take a breather after that hit. Yeah, things happen so fast. Like I said, you know, you almost don't have time to see what's going on. You just see the, somebody with the ball and you just grab it. Upland with their three score lead at this in the th midway through the third quarter. Third Might be letting down their guard just a little bit, but we see Cathedral still got a little bit of motivation and yeah. fight left. And a whistle here. Out of, out Upland, Upland with the timeout. Team, you know, a 10 and 1 team. Upland football like the like once again to think Brazzies is going to stay with it. They're not going to slow down and try to. Brazzies is located on the northwest corner of 16th and Mountain. The great team, great ambiance, and great entertainment. Go to Brazzies. Stay confident and not let yourself get down when it should slow down. Absolutely. Hey, earlier I was talking about some of the notable alumni from. Cathedral High School. And I mentioned uh, the uh, silver med medalist in the uh, metric right. mile run, uh, Bob McMillan. And, and this was in the 1952 Summer Olympics uh, and in Helsinki, Finland. And uh, would you be able to guess who might have won the gold medal that year? I think. Jesse Owen? Close. It was actually none other than David Baldwin Luxembourg. Anyways, back to the game. <laughs> no idea. All right, third and short. We got. Oh, Taj Davis. Oh, we might. That might little little contact. That is. Penalty flag on the field. Pass intended for number two. Yeah, dude. Yeah, when you're a defender, you just can't be on the body of a person, and and you've got to be looking for the ball and got to be going for the ball. 
that close. Yeah, uh, that's going to be an easy passing interference call. Yeah, the uh, the cathedral defensive back really had no choice as as Taj ran a great route there and had a had a had quite a bit of an angle on him to make the play, so he had to make a little contact to prevent that touchdown. That's right. So that'll take Pass interference up, in, against cathedral. up inside the 10-yard line for a first down. I was saying earlier, yes, uh, 1952, uh, Helsinki. yes, in the Helsinki, Josie Barthel Plus of Luxembourg actually won the gold medal. 15-yard line. Luxembourg. Yes. What event was that? The metric mile. The metric mile. Yes. He was considered a surprise winner. It's a 1,600 yard. All right. Line. First down at the 15 yard line. David Baldwin with a two halfback set. Hands it off. Well, for about a one yard game. Number. Brought down 20. by number 20, Demaria Armstrong. That's a hell of a play. Coming straight down the line uh, from, from the opposite side. Yeah, Cathedral, number and 20. Not, getting getting unstuck from all the way on the other side of the field to come across. It's usually rare to be able to get a tackle, even even if it's straight down the pipe um, through the A gap or between the center and guard. And he was going off the tackle. And he was able Hand to off to Cam. Cam Davis, a ball carrier. Another two yard right game. Side. Yeah, it was a remarkable play Talk by the strong safety from Cathedral. Yeah, that's sure got speed to get from, like I said, from one side. Uh, from one side of the field to the other to make that tackle in the backfield. Yeah, uh, Demaria Thompson really, or Demary, Demary Armstrong, the, the junior strong safety, really made a terrific play on that, that previous run. Yeah, it's an awesome feeling when you can go down a line and prevent them from getting to the line of scrimmage. And that he Pots did. To the left, Taj Davis, pots to the He's right. Got, uh, pistol. Third and eight. Shotgun formation spread wide as Taj to the, uh, the right side of the hash mark. Man coverage. He's going his way. He looked. He's going back. Baldwin. Going left side. Out of the side. Baldwin. Oh, Baldwin, oh, Baldwin throws Baldwin. an interception for the Cathedral. He takes it out, which might have been a, That's a huge play. For, huge play. Uh, I thought That's he had a man in the end zone. zone. Number 42 from Cathedral made a made a terrific play on the ball. That was Halid sky high to get that. And uh, Halid Halid Jabril, the senior linebacker from Cathedral, made a, a terrific read. It was a huge jump to get that get in between the receiver and the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a penalty on Cathedral. Personal foul against However, that's Cathedral. after the play. That's going to push him back inside the 10 because he only got to the 10 yards. Right. He should have taken a knee, but he Ball spotted at the five got a little line. right. Felt that would bring him to the 20. He felt the need to make a big play right, yeah. down by three scores. Understandable, was, but sometimes he was you just, already running forward when he uh, caught the ball because yeah. you know his momentum took him forward. Yeah, and but that decided to run for it. The penalty penalty was especially costly. They had the ball about the 11. Now they're at about the they're they're at the five yard line. No, backed up against the, the end zone. On the left side, actually probably could have taken the ball in himself. That's what I was thinking. Uh, was, um, he had a lot of room to run. And he did have somebody open, but again, pass right side incomplete. Oh, that's an incomplete pass. Halid Jabari Passing made a, 12, just a Jabari terrific Kimball. read on the ball. And um, on the covers, fortunately six. for Cathedral, that play enabled and to keep their slim hopes in this game alive. They obviously need to score here. Incomplete pass. Safety Gavin Scott. Thought he had a fumble there, but it was an incomplete pass. That'll bring us to third and 10. Some defensive substitutions. With a big hit, number 51, Leonard Leal. Leonard, big Leonard Leal making the hit on that. Yeah. Kind of uh, always a presence inside Leonard Leal is. Yeah, he's uh, the linebacker version of of Palomalu. Oh, Bryce Young back, Young makes a throw. Why? Yeah. Looks like they're gonna be forced to punt again. That was gonna be a little short. Yeah, he really had no time, and when you're in your if own end zone. If he did catch that, it would have been on the, in the sidelines. Jennifer, number 85, Ali Pringle. There wasn't a whole lot 
the offense can do there with the consistent amount of pressure that the Upland defensive front is applying. But if it's any consolation, at least it wasn't a touchdown. So that interception at least saved him from that. And that goes again back to the uh, decision for the linebacker to run it out and then right. the ensuing penalty. When you pin yourself back at the five yard line, chances are you're not gonna meet much success, especially given the opponent, the caliber of opponent you're facing at this point. Back inside his own end zone. And this is another reason why it's it's hard to be in the back. There's Ooh, a danger a nice of getting blocked like that. Oh, takes a backward bounce on what's 27 yard punt. Yeah, so when you're pinned back at the five yard line, you don't have a whole lot of room to kick as well. And uh, you know, if anything goes wrong, there's 10 yards of real estate where you could get tackled or drop the ball or something go wrong. And, and there he was able to get it off, but of course, feeling the pressure, it wasn't a very big kick. Yeah. Looks like they're setting the ball at Upland's 25 yard line. So once again, Terrific field position for the Highlanders. David Baldwin once again with back a, to basics with the I formation. Fullback, man motion. Back. Samarsic to the left side, the tight end there. Oh, another play he fake. Counter, and go to the right. Baldwin is running. He's at the ten. To the side, so he's got room to run. And he's going to be knocked out of the battle he's right got, before the end zone. Right I tell my camera guys, Nico that's the most dangerous part of the field. <laughs> Because if you're filming on that, by that pylon, oftentimes players get pushed out there, and I've had a couple of camera people get run over there. You're much safer up here. Yeah, it looks like he was out of about the three yard line there. That'll be first and goal once again for the Highlanders. David Baldwin. You don't see him run often, but he, when he, he does, does, it's electric. He is electric as a runner and as a passer as well. He makes good reads. That's why I was surprised that he could, I think he could have ran that last right. touchdown in, but he opted to throw it, unfortunately. Yeah, but Cam Jordan. Split back, uh, yeah. Cameron Davis on the left side. Just left to center, gets in. Probably a little bit too easily for that touchdown. Yeah, untouched on the goal line. You don't see that very often, but. That's know. just great blocking, great good reads, uh, good technique. And a tired defense. And, and a tired defense, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna put us up at about Four minutes and 13 On seconds to go. Point, Archie Green, number 85. Evan Rowe, the holder, number 16. Simon Samarsis, number 35. The this will put up and up by four, three, four scores. 27 point lead if he makes this extra point. Ball is snapped, the hold's down. The extra point is good. Is up, and he splits the, the upright for another extra point. Archie Green. 100% today. The score with 14 to go in the third quarter for 39-12. Well, Upland's Upland average margin of victory this season has been an astounding 38.5 points per game. And they are approaching that. It started. They started off a little slow. It was, it was a close game, but that kickoff return touchdown to end the first half, and now these two, uh, two touchdowns afterwards, they're at 27 points. Yeah, so, they've only had one game under 40 points, and that was against Rent through Cucamonga at 30 to 23. Impressive. All right, up. Cameron Walker, number 46, kicking off for the Scots. Cameron Walker with the kickoff. He sends that ball up to about the five yard line. Taking it to six-yard line. Going to his left. Right. Now he's going to oh. slow down. Oh. He is not sure why he did that. Line. But Leonard Leo, just talking about him earlier as the uh, linebacker version of Palomalu, blowing he, up that play. Yeah, he met him at yeah, the 10-yard line. I mean, he got rocked so hard his helmet flew off. Yeah, Leonard Lau, the senior linebacker, six foot, 215 pounds. And Aaron Howard, correction. On the kickoff return. Yeah, Aaron Howard 
a little bit slow to get. Yeah, the he met a, he met a linebacker at full speed at the ten yard line. That couldn't have felt too good. Yeah, I'm He's not sure curious. why he slowed down. I think he wanted to redirect and try to go the opposite he direction, was. seeing seeing a big wall coming from the right side. But you know, you can't do that in front of a, a big linebacker coming at you. Yeah, that was unfortunate, and he looks a little shaken up. He's carried to the sideline, and he's being tended to at Coming this moment. In, assisting him off to the side of the field, number 52, Keith Conley. Yeah, we wish him the best. We hope he's okay. He's being attended to right now. Now, if there's any time to be injured, you don't ever want to be injured, but if, it, if you're going to be injured, it would be best the last game. Yeah, for obvious reasons, but yes, we do wish him well. And we do. They have terrific trainers over there at Cathedral High School. Some of and the best in the good nation. Bryce Young. And oh. almost picked that off on the deflection. Did the receiver calamities continue and as that off. pops out of uh, number six? Yeah, Ahmad Lipskin, that, he almost had that, Nick but... Zamora almost picked that off on the deflection, but he was just about an inch short. Ball hit the ground, incomplete pass, second down and 10 yards to go. And Bryce Young's got a lot of zip on his throws as well. And Bryce Young's been playing very well, but his team's consistently backed up inside their own 10, 20 yard line, drop passes by his receivers, penalties. And, so, and part of that, it's not just the the skill oh, level. He's player, pressured immediately, makes another man miss, throws on the run. It's the defense. It's Josiah just Zamara pressuring up to the 36 yard line. I mean, I mean, plays are going to get off, you know, and, and people are going to make catches, but it's what you do afterwards that will build character, and, and you'll see the fundamentals show up on this defense. Absolutely. And Josiah Samora with another big First play. Christian 42, Edison 6. Cathedral still throwing the ball with authority. Not pass incomplete. Uh, incomplete pass. Little shove. That almost netted up pass on another penalty, but. Yeah, it was close enough after the. We have some more scores. You know, the throw went 18. off almost. Norco Almost zero. to catch, and, and the timing was yeah. just enough that it wasn't a penalty. Yeah, Malik Goss, he got a little excited there. He he laid a little sh shot into uh, Alex Franco as he tried to go up for the reception, but no penalty, no foul. And we go Octave, back to Octave. Right He's got a little room to run, a little gain of seven well, yards. Yep. He's running into his own tomorrow. player a little bit on uh, right down the middle a little after the catch. And looks like they're bringing in a double tight end formation. They brought in number 46. That'd be DJ Riley. He's going to keep the ball. Uh, yeah, he absolutely has no time to throw. Yeah. Bryce Young's looking for a penalty on that. Now, I'm not. I'm you not normally do, that would you would do that on a screenplay where you release the players and you just throw over the heads of the people coming in. But he had to nobody you, there. There's, there's nobody to throw to. And so I'm not sure what that was designed to do. Uh, looks like somebody just missed a block because uh, Upland's linebacker just came straight through the line of yeah. scrimmage. Untouched it, it, it looked again. like there was probably two or three of them coming in. So fourth down, Bryce, Bryce Young's got to go for it here, down by four scores. So we'll see what he does in the shotgun formation. Bryce Young's got a little time. Young throws on the run. Uh, that broken up. This is just Number great coverage by Upland. Coverage Passing and a lot of pressure. Had, had a little, a little bit more time to throw than he did in previous possessions, but unfortunately for the Purple Phantoms, nothing going on that play. Yeah, it, it seems like the defensive line linebackers of Upland has figured out this offensive line are getting through every time. Yeah, with little little resistance right. on behalf of the Purple Phantoms. Another young team. Uh, Upland's just far superior, both athletically. I thought you were going to say Purple Eaters. People, pe Purple People Eaters. No, <laughs> Purple Phantoms. As they are not referred to, but given their purple attire <laughs> and their name, Phantoms, it just sounds natural. A and little keeper. Right down the middle. He's going to put uh, his head down. 
and try to muster oh. a few more yards. Pyle moves forward, but it's bigger to call forward progress. Yeah, he'll, that'll be a good seven yard, gain, seven yard gain, gain of seven yards. Tackle by number 33, Shannon Sykes, and number 40. Oakland's be, become quite a, a football powerhouse. I mean, they're anywhere you go in Southern California, a lot of people who follow football even just a little bit uh, regard Upland as one of the uh, more elite football programs in the, the area. Yeah, uh, last year, Baseline League was named one of the most challenging athletic Comp competitive, athletically competitive leagues in the country, uh, in in all sports. Looking at you know Chino Hills basketball team. Oh yeah, with the Ball Brothers. That's right, and uh, you know of course Upland and Rancho Cucamonga's football teams. Um, and they've got just got a great tradition. A lot, lot of talent league. in this yeah. area, and all around, and uh, and of course in football, up until last year, um, Upland was like four-time baseline league champions. Yeah. And uh, just last year, Rancho took that title, and up, uh, Upland took it back this year. Yeah, a lot of talent in Upland and Rancho Cucamonga and the surrounding areas. Of, and so that draws people to, you know, if they're looking for, for a place to live, um, you know, a good community. Great community. Uh, you know, it's a smaller city, um, but uh, very diverse. Yeah, 77,000 student. Uh, seven, uh, sorry, population of 77,000 uh, here at Upland, and uh, you know you've got diverse socioeconomic status, diverse cultures. Number 16. And it's a it's a pleasure to to teach at this high school. Hand off, left side. It looked like Upland. It Whoa! There's a shot to the head. Ouch. Uh, yeah, it's just. You know, you could sense the frustration over a cathedral side. That was yeah. completely uncalled for. And a flag comes out. Of course, it's well going to go against cathedral. Well-deserved flag going against cathedral. Yeah. Anything that egregious. Need to punch, uh, a person with a helmet on. No need for that in this game. Young student athletes will make mistakes. He'll learn from this. And it looks like David Baldwin's going back into the game. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Cathedral. <laughs> yeah, it's never a good idea to punch somebody who's wearing a helmet. Or punch anybody in general, but if they're wearing a helmet, that's... Yeah, a huge fight broke out my junior year between our rival school, Kennedy. In San Fernando versus Kennedy High School, and a big fight broke out. And uh, one of the players on the San Fernando Tigers side takes a swig at a helmet, breaks his hand, out shatters his uh, carpal, you know, the, oh. the bones in his. Uh, Cam, Cam Davis on un left side. untouched. Wow. Just like that, walks in for a touchdown. And that puts up and over the 40, part, 40 point mark once again for what seems to be about the 11th time this season. Junior Cam Davis takes it in for a touchdown from the 10 yard line. Cameron tacks on to his uh, 16 touchdowns for the season. Yeah. I think that, that, and that carry puts him over 100 yards for the game. Just yeah, that'll put him over 900 yards for the season. Just another impressive game and another impressive season for the junior running back at Upland, California, Cam Davis. Archie Green to attempt the extra kick. kick. The Little fumble on the hole, but he got the kick. And the kick is good. good. Right. That brings us to 46 to 12. More penalties. Cathedral is getting chippy. Obviously, sensing the impending defeat. Their season is over. Students are upset. Unnecessary penalties. Uh, some Upland coaches are running on the field to get their players away. Yeah, keep them safe. Make eh. sure the penalties don't go on there or, or something uh, ridiculous happen. And now we have the uh, the Upland crowd chanting the Sha Na 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 Goodbye Now song. Obviously directed towards the, the players and the fans of Cathedral High. 
given that the lead is now at a staggering 34 points. Yeah, they're only four points away from their average margin of victory at this point. Now, of course, for Cathedral, they're not used to being down this low. I mean, they've they've yeah. only lost one game, and it, and it wasn't a, a blowout. They're a very talented team over at Cathedral. Upland's just coming away with the big plays when they needed them, and their overall talent has, has been noticeable to this point so far. I mean, that loss against Loyola was was just a 10-point loss, 17 to 7. And uh, you know, with that 46 get being being beat out 46, that's not yeah, you know a, a, a small mistake. And Upland will be uh, kicking off from the 40-yard line uh, after that additional unnecessary roughness penalty. We have penalty. some lost keys that have been turned into the press box. Anybody Denisha from the dog pound section in the Upland bleachers. Denisha, I believe we have your house keys. Please come to the press box. Thank you. Hmm. They found yeah. Denisha's keys. Denisha lost her keys Titles in the stands. Four, Heritage, 41, Calabasas, 7. Okay. So we are ready for the kickoff after that slight delay in action after another unnecessary roughness penalty by Cathedral. And Upland is... Getting ready to kick. Oh, they are going. Now they are kicking off from the 50. Penalty being marked off. I'm going to guess Penalty this is going to be a off. touchback. I'm not sure what's going on. So they are kicking off from the 45 yard line with all the uh, unnecessary roughness penalties. I'm not sure. He's either going to just kick it straight into the end zone or maybe uh, attempt some sort, sort of squib kick, but I don't think they do that with their large lead. and. Yeah, that kicks out of the end, back of the end zone. Automatic touchback. Right. First and ten, Cathedral at their 20 yard line. So Cathedral. as the, Cathedral the roll goes, over. when the ball goes into the end zone, you get an automatic 20 yards, and so they will start there. Yeah, at the 20 uh, yard line, we'll see what they can do. Have a little bit of room to work with, but, you know, down 34 points. Their hopes are all but dashed, but they could at least make the score a little bit more respectable with a drive or two. We'll see what Bryce Young can do. Now, lots of things can happen in high school. Uh, you know, momentum is a big part of the game. And if they can keep their heads up and, and execute a host of great plays, who knows? They Sk still have Sk more than a quarter to go. Quarter and some change. 34 points is quite a lead to overcome, but you do have a talented quarterback. Great play. Get to the tight end on the left side. Cut. Number 85. Sorry, that was a receiver. Ali Pringle. The five foot ten sophomore out of Los Angeles, number 85, with a nice reception. Terrific throw. You know, down by as much as they are, you still see uh, the young quarterback and the receivers competing out there. The team's going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future out in L.A. This might not be the last we see of them. Bryce Young looks in from his coaching staff, gets to play, hands it off to Octave. Octave, brought down by Corey Octave Thomas. Octave is going down and, and just going to the pile. Still running hard. Pick up. Five yards. Yeah, a little five-yard pickup, still running hard. Octave a little slow to get up. Looks like he's running to the sideline. Yeah, he, nope. he hit that wall pretty hard. Yeah, he's running to the side. He's, it looks a little shaken a up. Guy. He looks okay. And number... Just going to give him a breather and... Yeah, he'll be back in there. Number he's okay. 46 will come in to yeah. take his place. And number... Dante Riley's in for Octave at this juncture. He's back in blocking and we have... Bryce, Bryce Young, Young rolling out gonna, in traffic. Takes a little hit. Yeah, he's going to have to take it because... Uh, his receivers were covered, didn't like what he was seeing, and uh, saw a little hole and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Tried to scramble out. He might have gotten half a yard, but not much. They don't look like they have the same zip they had in the first quarter. No, not at all. They came out firing, and their offense looked very fresh, very organized. Now they're lagging a little bit. A lot of looking over to the sideline. 
just their overall demeanor and their body language is somewhat less than it was at the start of the game, to say the least. Yeah. Correction, 60. Number and they look tired, don't they? You fight all season to get to this point, and you're down by 30 plus points in the fourth quarter. With the start of, the it's got to be difficult for the young men on the cathedral side of the football field, but you can count it as a learning experience. And a lot of these, a lot of these athletes will be back for next year's season. So don't don't hang your heads too low, Cathedral. You'll be okay. Unless now this is the first time that they've met in in any kind of uh, venue, it's, you know, CIF playoffs or preseason or any anything like that. And so, uh, you know, this is the first taste Cathedral have had with the uh, you know the, the San Bernardino County team. Yeah, competition's a little bit more or actually difficult you know, up here in, at the baseline league, I guess you say. They did play Redland East Valley, which is in the San Francisco. Yeah, they beat them last week considerably. Right. And their quarterback threw for more than 230 yards and multiple touchdown passes. But the stout defensive line and linebacking and defensive backboard that Upland possesses makes it difficult for even the best of quarterbacks to perform against. And right tackle number Absolutely. 78, Luke Felix Fualalo. Okay, we are at fourth and four, so it looks like they're going for yet another fourth, fourth down. down conversion. They've been un unsuccessful Bins. in their last few. Josiah Zamar is actually leaving the field from late, late formation. Substitute. Draws back to pass. Draws back. He's running almost slips. Right, John? Right. Nice throw on the run. Jeremiah Kindle. Number 12 the reception. And Kindle, Kindle, great hands. Uh, going out of bounds. Territory. At nice. about the 40. Yeah, nice, nice play. You see, uh, you see the arm strength that uh, Bryce Young possesses, and Kindle runs a nice little out route, able to pick up about 18 yards on the play. First and 10 for the Phantoms. Shotgun formation. You got Split Kindle. Receiver. Kindle on the far right. He throws it out to number two. He flag. is was immediately met, immediately by, met by multiple couple, defenders. Or, yeah. And what is that? Tackle number two, Malik, Malik Goss. Malik Goss on the tackle. Malik Goss with the initial contact. Right, coming all the way from safety. That ball was caught by Ahmad Lipscomb. Upland still playing hard, even with their large lead. They take pride in their average margin of victory which is close to 40 points it looks like they want to maintain that it's something that that we had mentioned they're hard hitting absolutely seen a lot of big hits this yeah game. took one one player out Young throws. Oh. Uh, another drop pass that's been the story Young today for ali, pringle, number 85. Now, ali pringle that one a little low but that bounced right off his chest he should have made that play on the coverage yeah, especially Robinson, when you got so much on the line one. at this point yeah, according to my numbers, that's seven drop passes today for the uh, the the Phantom receivers. Far too many mistakes if you want to be or even contend with a team as good as Upland. But you also have to uh, give it up for Upland's defensive backs. I mean, their pressure, even when the ball is located perfectly, there's a defender there. always making a play on the ball. Well, Bryce Young get incomplete. incomplete. Throws on the run. And, yeah, I see Bryce Parker coming in really fast on the left side. He's, he's been harassing Bryce Young all game long. Yeah, Bryce Young has had very little time to throw throughout this game. And yet again, he's thrown on the run. Have you seen Bryce Young actually stay in the pocket? He's not really able to. He's, yeah, he's, he doesn't have that luxury. Yeah, and when the couple times he has, he delivers strikes. And he, Yeah, given the time, he looks like a very... Deadly accurate quarterback. Yeah, the ball zips out of his hand. But if, no quarterback, no no matter how good you are, can uh, there's a movement sides, on the right side. Number 78. Right tackle. Yeah, there's no matter how good you guys your your receiving core and your quarterback is, if you don't have the, the protection, you're not gonna be able to get those passes yeah. and, and even in broken down protection. When the uh, upland defense applies pressure, we've seen him escape multiple defenders and still make plays with both his legs and his arm. 
Kind of reminds me a little bit of Aaron Rodgers of the Packers. Just that uh, that intangible, the feel for the game, able to uh, make something happen when things break down. So that's a very unique uh, trait which Bryce Young possesses. But you still need a little bit more help from your receivers and your line to succeed. Yeah, and there's more Bryce pressure. Parker. Bryce Parker almost grabs Bryce. his arm. Wow, and, he, and he's able to get that as off. It, that looked like Aaron Rodgers escaping from. Oh, we got number 56. Did number 56 just get called for that? I think so. He should know he's better. He's off saying something to yeah. Bryce Parker. He must be frustrated because, like I said, Parker's had the better of that matchup. Um, he's just, he's just ripping through, you know, a, and, and that's not a punt. There, that's a technique. You, the rip is uh, kind of like a, a hook with your arm and getting under the player and, and squeezing through that hole, and he just gets there every time. Yeah, I mean, Bryce Young able to escape that, and I thought, I thought that ball was coming out when he hooked, when Parker hooked Young's arm, and yeah. Parker is so strong. He right. ripped right away. Right. He was able ran, to hold on to that ran ball. Ran three yards and then threw the ball. A perfect strike. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic for a concentration. Game. Yeah. Too, that could throw your game off. You know, you you're, you almost got tackled. You, someone's arms on your arm, and then you're still able to maintain your focus with the receiver and then get it off to him for a perfect strike into the numbers. Yeah. Watch when, when, when Bryce Young moves around in the pocket, you see him, he gets so low to the ground when he makes his cuts. He, yeah, his he elbows almost to, to, to he, tackle. He is so, his cuts are so precise and crisp. It's, it, and they're abrupt. It, very, he looked great, side. caught complete. Oh, he's out, out of bounds. bounds. Out of bounds. So that's Intended not for Jabari Kin Kindle. Would have been a nice 12 yard completion. Nice throw, slightly out of bounds. That's intended for number 12, Jabari Kindle. Yeah. On the covers, number six, when you see him, Jayden when you see him eluding defenders, he he makes these cuts and it, it's thrown the the Upland defenders off initially, almost every time. But fortunate for Upland, they they have so much pressure coming that they have other people interfering with the play. But just very impressed by the young quarterback. Drops back, back to pass. Press young, looking to his rolls right. out to his right. He's Yet again, escapes. Up. There he is again. Making plays with his legs, bumps into his offense lineman. He's going deep, and yet another perfect throw. This kid is unbelievable. Five, touchdown! He's into the touchdown. Big hit in the end zone. That's a touchdown and a late hit on Upland. Um, that was a sensational play. Although he was still in bounds on it, they're gonna think it was a little excessive. No, it, but he was he was past the the pylon the though. Pylon, yeah. yeah, it was, it was unnecessary. What an amazing play by Bryce Young. He escaped pressure yet again, line, ran to the complete opposite side of the field, bumps into his own offensive lineman, but still has the wherewithal to deliver a perfect strike to his receiver who goes in for a 40-yard touchdown. That's right. We just, we just saw him do that earlier, escape you know, what would have been a sack and then get it right to his receiver, and he does it there again. Perfectly, ex perfectly delivered throw for a touchdown. Now we had some some contact here over on the left side that was questionable, and we're I think they might be discussing oh, wow. a couple things whether that affected the play and whether that was indeed uh, an excessive hit on the the. Well, it looks zone. like they're spotting the ball back at the 30. So I thought I thought it was a late hit on Upland, but it looks like it might have been a, a holding holding on the deep unnecessary oh, roughness on the defense. Defense holding on Upland. Dead ball, Good. personal foul. Looks Upland. like two personal fouls. Touchdown. On Upland. Touchdown is a rule. Okay. Yeah. So I think that there was an issue on the the backside uh, before <coughs> Young delivered the ball, so and that was against Upland. And then of course the excessive hit on the end zone. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's ball game can be viewed yeah, on the, the unsportsmanlike network.com. Once again, Replay great play by Bryce Young. That's late hit by Upland. That penalty, we'll be, penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. So other Division II matchups going on today, on the second round, uh, we've got Valencia Norco and Calabasas Heritage. 
And of course, uh, the teams we'll be playing against next week, the winner of the Edison Oaks Christian football game. Oh, wow. That should be an exciting game nonetheless. Lining up for the extra point one would assume, but we still see Bryce Young out there. That They may go for a two point conversion here. Yep, they are going for two. We see Ju Justin Octave and Bryce Young in there. Breaking out of the huddle. Two running backs set. Attempting a two-point conversion are the Phantoms. Uh, and their big the team play there. back is Octave. Octave, number 44. Octave's going to throw. And the two-point conversion is good. good. Yes. Yes. Two good. Conversion attempt is good. Makes it a 26-point look. The score with 9.57 to go in the ball 46 game. to 20. Upwards so Octave, Octave delivering a pass. Yeah, trick play. You know, they were probably holding on to that play all season and realized that <laughs> this would be the last opportunity to, to use, use it. it yeah. Rather than save it for next year, they, they, pulled it with, they pulled it within 26 points as opposed to 27. <laughs> Fighting spirit is what... Cathedral High School possesses at this point. Yeah, you've got to. You know, you you don't want to let you don't want to end your season okay, just score, giving up. Absolutely. Valencia, some of, some of these players have some bright shoes. You see some bright green shoes. I like yeah, that. Uh, gold Michael Johnson Olympic gold shoes. Yeah, Kyle Jones over here yeah. with the gold, gold those, shoes. Those are looking slick. A little confusion here on the kickoff. Yes, the uh, unnecessary roughness penalties, and the, the late hit have... Referees are wow. lining the ball up at the 35-yard line. This looks more like a field goal attempt rather than a yeah, kickoff. Really. Just give them the ball at the five-yard line at this point. Nope, they're kicking off from the 30. Oh, I've so never seen this. In all my years covering high school football, James, Oakland. this is the first time I've seen somebody kick off from the 30-yard line. The uh, this might not be a bad spot Upland to try to do an onside line. kick. This is the Upland 30-yard line there, not their own 30-yard line. Because if uh, Upland recovers the ball, then they're still back at their 20. Ons if this you is, recover this the is ball, be then an, you've got a huge field Well, they're going advantage. for an onside kick. If they recover the onside kick, they're going to be at the 20-yard line. I, I may have said that too loud. They might have heard me because that's what they're going to do. All right. They're going for the onside kick on Upland's 30-yard line. Something you rarely see. Uh, it's not go a very good far. kick. Yeah, Bryce Parker's, Parker's got, got it. Has it for for special four. teams, that's called the hands team. Yeah. Um, you're going to put all your best uh, receivers and people that can catch the ball and handle it out there to make sure that they get that onside kick. Yeah. And th there's another penalty. This one looks like it was against, I want to say it's Cathedral. They might have gotten a little late hit in. I think we've exceeded 20 penalties for the game, most of them being late hits, a couple holding. Oh, we ha oh, it was a legal procedure on Cathedral. So oh, Upland will cathedral. decline that penalty and take the ball at the 20-yard line rather than going through another kick. Little clarification on behalf of the referees and Coach Salter over on Upland sideline. Been a confusing past few minutes with all the late hits and the penalties and the onside kick at the 30 yard line. The other 30 yard line. Only yeah, in high this school has football. Definitely slowed down the momentum of the game for both teams. Well, and more whistles. And at this point, I really have no idea what's going on and what's taking. I'm not sure what those. Oh, they are re-kicking. Now they're going back for. to the. So the referees, I thought Upland had the option of um, declining the penalty. So now they are re-kicking from the, not the 30-yard line, the 35-yard line. This is interesting. Why wouldn't Upland just decline the penalty and take the ball? But now, the Cathedral has an opportunity. It may not have been a declinable penalty. I. I wasn't aware there's such a thing. One would assume if a team um, commits a penalty that the team should have the option because now Cathedral has the opportunity 
of kicking an onside kick again. So that works out in the favor of Cathedral. So the kick. I don't see why they're not going for a. Uh, the flags come out again. More. All right, the referees at this point just got to give up on the ball at the 20-yard line and let him go. This is getting borderline. I think they're enjoying the sounds of the whistles. Ah, and yes. I think it's the harmonizing they of are. the three they are. The they, whistles. That, sounds like that Simon are and Garfunkel with whistles in their mouth. Yeah, it's a, it's a pleasing sound to them, and so they want to continue blowing on the whistles. Well, sorry. Against Cathedral. Yeah, you have a falsetto whistle. <laughs> you have, you have your alto yes. whistle. You have your tenor whistle. Oh, there we go oh, again. Yep, another there. another whistle solo. Sounds like a mockingbird. So, sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't do the national anthem with the whistles prior to the start of this game. He's a he's a whistle soloist. He's a wo he's a wh these referees are whistle virtuosos. He's a, and now we the are kicking off once again. Of the whistle blowing. This is exciting football, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Our third straight kickoff from inside Upland's 50-yard line. <laughs> They're Let's back. See. Uh, another, another whistle. These guys. Okay, let these guys play. <laughs> 9.52 to play a fourth quarter. A calamity Even, of number six. Number 18 is special pleading teams. his case. Now they are... They may be saying you can't line up. No, yes, there's a little the confusion they, of where a player's supposed up, to be. Yeah. They have brought this game down to a straight out halt. These kids just want to play their game. I don't see why they don't kick the ball on the ground for Oh, there's an opportunity to run, the, to run the ball. 20, go, go! 20, he breaks it. Uh, he's, he's got room to run. 40. He's get, he, oh, little he's getting to the other direction. He's going to try to keep this going. Wow. Still on his feet. Oh, he gives him. Now yeah, that a was lateral. Silly. Unnecessary yeah, lateral. Maybe a little silly uh, w when you're up that, that Somebody's much. Somebody's helmet came. Oh, wait, here's uh, another chorus of whistles. <laughs> another another, another flag. flag. It's like a fireworks of flags <laughs> as well. <laughs> whistles and flags. <laughs> These referees have got to be out of breath for as much as they've been blowing on those whistles. And now the referees are getting into it with the Upland coaching staff. Telling them to stay off the field. Upland coaching staff is having none of it. Coach Salter. He's is, telling his players to stay back. Oh, the up uh, the officials are trying to figure out what's going on at this point. Players have no idea what's going on. Yeah, it, not not, that not whistle nothing may against have been them. Blown a little, this is the I whistles don't know have what gone. The whistles were, going, were about, but that was a. a Fair lateral backwards. Yeah, uh, I not probably it, not the best idea. But it was a it was I a poor was, idea. Yeah, he's trying trying to do his best to keep the play alive. Yeah, but there's no need to at this point. No, and that was already a big play. And now there's a player down on C Cathedral's side. I I can't tell who that is at the point, but trainers are rushing in. We have a player down on the field. Oh, we wish him the best. Still can't tell. I'm not sure what happened. There's so much going on with the yelling and the referees. Looks like 42 or is it? I'm not sure, but it, there's something going on with his left leg. Looks okay. May have been a cramp. Yeah, they're moving. Hopefully it's that's. Okay. Hopefully it's something. He looks like he's okay. It's yeah, not a head injury. He's okay. Gonna he's get up on off. his own. That's number 43. Round of for number 43, Elijah Islam. Elijah Islam will be okay. The Let's, and the referees are still talking. They, at this point, have lost complete control of the game. They might have some conflicts with each other. Yeah, I, uh, I think there's some inner, inner turmoil. And what started out as a beautiful chorus of referee <laughs> whistles has turned into a. Uh, an all-out mutiny amongst these men in striped shirts. Hopefully they're able to settle it soon so we could get on with this most entertaining football game. Men in stripes sound like an interesting movie. I don't see why referees get such a bad rep. The ball spotted at the open 28. Okay, back to football. So do we got David Baldwin waiting for the play. Oh, that's right. This was weird. There was a football game going on, wasn't there? 
All the players look a little disoriented at this point with all the halts and the whistles and the flags. But Kyle Jones is breaking yet another run. Nice 30 yard run. Past the 50. Kyle Jones with the. He's got the golden shoes. His emphatic 30 yard run. Another flag. First and 10 at the 50 yard line. Kyle Williams with the 30 yard run. We got two running backs in. Baldwin back to pass. Baldwin back. He's goes into gets the a little pocket. pressure. He's still on his feet. He's still on his feet. He's running it. He breaks three tackles. Another tackle. He's going to get a first down. Wow, he's getting rushed by a host of, of phantom defenders and was able to roll out a couple times and yeah, he broke juke a couple players and get. He Pass may have broken down. five tackles on a single play. Number 44, Tyler Morrison. Well, we, we talk about Bryce Young's uh, wherewithal to be able to slip defenders. And there's uh, an example on the other side. Absolutely. Baldwin. Equally as impressive. Very fast on and, his feet and good and awareness. Considerably larger, too. Baldwin is one of the bigger plays on the field, but we have a penalty going back the other way. And it may have been a late oh, hit. Off. Holder, a late Holding. hit. Referees have not done that. But this best. is a, it looks like a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, that was a huge penalty because he gained 10, but from the spot of the, the initial spot of the ball, they're going back 15. So they'll be at the, just ahead uh, on the 31 yard line. Two running back formation. High formation. Under center is Baldwin. Gives it off Kyle to Williams. Cameron Davis. Jones. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Jones, Jones, sorry. I just saw the two. <laughs> uh, number 21 is, I should have looked at the shoes. Sykes. And he gets back to the 40. Ball at the 40 yard line. Second and long, second and 20. Second and 20. Of course, the way the offense have been playing today, that's uh, not a, a huge, too far off possibility to get the first down. Kyle Jones in the backfield once again, behind the fullback in the I formation. David Baldwin under center. A little trip Bryce motion. Bryce Parker and the, uh, the tight end Smarsich. Run off tackle. The... Kyle Jones Kyle breaks Jones. another. Bounces Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Line. Just about. With the kind of yardage they've been gaining, it's, 10 it's yards not far-fetched to, to say that they can get this first down. This will be about third down. and 13, I'd say, after that seven-yard run by Kyle Jones. And uh, they bring Cam Jordan in, who's split next to the quarterback in a shotgun formation. Trip set to the right, quarterback in shotgun. Throw to the left to Todd Davis. And this Todd tackle, Davis is gone. He's open. He's, and he's on got one, one man, man to beat. beat. And stiff arms to the end zone. And that's going to be a touchdown. Nope. Down at the one. Oh, no. They're going to call it. Todd Taj, Taj Davis has some breakaway speed. That's right. I mean, he easily could and have been a stop by the defender. It was right there. Oh, we've got a, a man hurt? down on the yeah, left side. See. At the end zone. There's a cathedral player hurt at the goal line. That looks like number 16. Player down, number 18, Aaron Howard. Todd yeah, Davis gets met about the 10 yard line, but stiff arms and stays on his feet to drive for almost a touchdown, just a yard short. Yeah, for his fast pace and his Swiftly as this game moved in the first half, this second half has been slow with the penalties, the disagreement amongst the officials, a couple injuries, and um, this Cathedral player looks to be okay. He's up on, he's being attended to. There's been a few injuries also that slowed down the game. That number 18 on Cathedral is um, Aaron Howard. And of course, the. He's a wide receiver. The plethora of penalties. Yes, the penalty. We're, I believe we are at uh, 20, 29 combined penalties Tom for the Davis. game. 
an all-time CIS all quarterfinal line. record. First and goal up win from the one. Possibly. Possibly. I made that up. <laughs> but that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Bring you guys nothing but the facts. And he's okay. He's walking off the field. Team. Yeah, so this gives time for, for Salter to talk to his team. And probably talking about ethics here talking and about uh, making sure that they don't get sure into more trouble. No more penalties after the impending one-yard touchdown run that will ensue in the next play. Aaron Howard is taking his time. Not really limping, just walking very slowly with his trainers. Much to the chagrin of the Upland Highlanders. <laughs> so they and get back to the at, line. He's at about midfield. He's at the 20. He's at the 30. Walking back to the sidelines. But as long as he's okay, that's what really matters. And he's about three feet from the sideline, and we should be back to game act. Oh, he's walking. Oh, now he's... Tyler is up to the line of scrimmage. Uh, get to the line real quick. That's poor sportsmanship on Aaron Howard's Kyle behalf. Touchdown, Jones. Upland Highlanders. Kyle Jones. Jones, number 21, with his golden third, shoes. Golden shoes. Very impressive young running back. He's had a big day today. Another big day. The Kyle Jones and Cam Jordan tan running back tandem from Upland High is. Cam Davis. Cam That's Davis. right. The Cam junior Davis. Cam Davis. Kyle Jones, the senior. Uh, so he's gonna he's gonna be able to you know leave here with uh, lots of successes to talk about. Okay. In for the extra point, which will make it 33 point. Oh, there was, uh, the ball goes the uprights, but I don't think I've ever seen so many pen so many penalties Jeez. in the game. It's almost as if. The players are doing it intentionally at this point. <laughs> right. Let's screw up the point after <laughs> attempt. Anyways, it's been a long week. A lot of a lot of students are looking forward to Thanksgiving. That's and the right. Time with their family, so their mind might be Upland. not one hundred percent into the game at this juncture. Upland, like uh, a lot of schools around the district, have elected to spend some of the days that they have off because you have to have 187 days for Point construction after and you can divide up your break time you know whether you have two weeks spring break or you have uh, extra days here or there um, off for like say Thanksgiving and like the other schools around here uh, Upland is elected to take the entire week off for Thanksgiving and so they will be off this week and then we'll be returning while they're on break for the you know, apparently, if they, the, if they maintain this lead, uh, they'll be playing in the playoff game, third round of the CIF final next week, semifinals. Um, and it'll either be at Charter Oak or Edison. Charter Oak and Covina? Uh, I'm sorry, Oaks Christian. Oaks Christian, I was going to say. Or Oaks Christian and Edison. Okay, that should be a very contested matchup either way. All right, Upland is set for the kickoff while Cathedral is making its way back cathartically. And we are almost ready for the kickoff. Cameron Walker kicking off for the Highlanders. Cameron Walker back with the kickoff. The kickoff number 18, Aaron at, at this point, you know, our game's fallen way behind other games. We have the final for Oaks Christian. That's 20 Oaks Christian versus Edison. Another flag. Yeah. So the Another final score, Oaks Christian 24, Edison 19. So the winner of this matchup will play Oaks Christian at Oaks Christian. Okay. And Oaks Christian is a very talented Penalty football team. So ball. Upland is going to have their hands full. Another flag on the field. Not sure what this one is for. It looked like a. I believe it was called a fair catch. 
So Cathedral has the ball at their 16 yard line, first and 10 Fairness. All right, it's going to be first and 10 at the 10 yard line. They called a fair catch on that. Interesting, you typically don't fair catch a ball outside the goal line. But with the game out of hand, yeah, I think a, the Cathedral a, return man just decided kickoff. not to risk a fumble. And pass another drop pass. On the coverage, closing quickly, number 51, Leonard Leal. Yeah, Leonard Leal breaking up that pass. So we called his name a couple times today. Yeah. Big linebacker. Six. So Oaks Christian. Well they are 10 and 2 overall. Down 10. The ball here, 20. Yeah, Octave up still to about the 20 yard line, still on his feet. And there's a whistle, they saw forward progress. Up at about the 24 yard line. On the tackle for up with number 40, Nick Zamora. Yeah, Nick Zamora on the tackle. Number 22, Malik Goss. And number 60, Paul Hochi. All right, what are we Passing at? Third and two. Uh, to number three, Corey Payne. Tackle by number six, Jaden Dedman. Okay, we are at first and 10. Cathedral's got the ball at the 30 yard line after that eight yard gain. Bryce Young in shotgun formation with Octave right at his side, trips formation to the left. And some man coverage. He's pressured once again, gets rid of the ball. Octave with the reception, oh. incomplete. Just bobbled the ball just a second. Looked like he was going to get it, but the defender got in really quick. Justin Flo in on that tackle. Number 10, Justin Flo. And number 65, Justin Flo's all over the football field. Hard to believe this young man's only really a sophomore. Yes. Very good instincts. Yeah, his nickname, Baby Man. Baby Man. He doesn't uh, look much like a baby to me. He's That's just a baby and it looks like the man. I, hey, complete out to That's number three. Right Although what was going on there, it looked like the, the line on both sides were a little lethargic there. Um, yeah. The play goes off easily. I think the, uh, the consistent Jamie pauses Jamie have kind of put a little halt to the game. Corey yeah. Payne. See a little more. Third lethargic brand of football as opposed to the right the hard the fast hard hitting the fast yeah, pace we, we, we saw, saw in the first half so you can attribute that to a lot of the penalties and I think so, so. Now, another matchup that's going on today uh, in the other bracket Valencia versus Norco and Valencia takes that one a, a surprise win there 67 to 21 wow Valencia Marcia. with a Walloping right over oh, by okay. Magic Mountain. Driven out of bounds by number 25, Gavin Scott. Gavin Scott, an undersized linebacker, oh, but back, he's been involved Justin Octave. quite a bit on defense for the Highlanders. And a gain of six for Octave, so that'll bring us to uh, fourth down and one. And they're obviously going for it, being down by multiple scores. Justin Young out in the Shotgun formation with Octave at his side. Three receivers to the left. Upland looked like they jump, but they're saying somebody from. Paul Sarr, Cathedral. Yep, Cathedral yeah, you, you can't move once you get set on that line. And, Repeat a fourth down. And that was, uh, that's going to be fourth down and six. An offensive lineman just shifted so slightly enough to draw uh, the defender off, line, off <coughs> sides. So I'll make it fourth and six with the penalty. Same set in there. We got Bryce Young, the quarterback, Octave. Three receivers once again on the left. We got Josiah Zamora motioning over to the right. Getting picked up by the linebacker, some man coverage. Bryce Young audibling at the line. Split receivers. Split, split receivers. Looks to his left. He's, he's Goes got to Zamora. Right. Zamora. Yeah, good. Got it. That's Josiah good for seven Zamora. yards. That's going to be a first down. Yeah, so 
we were talking about the quarterback's ability to check receivers. He goes, looks left, and there's nothing there. Looks right, finds a receiver, and gets a first down. That's an excellent play by Bryce Young. Absolutely. And the receivers to maintain that. Yeah. We have the scores for the Calabasas Heritage game. 41 to 7. Heritage takes that. And so, is that right? So that'll be. I'll have to check that again. So All right, Bryce Young back to pass. Heritage. He's got Josiah Zamora. Once again, Zamora makes a cut. He's up past. Oh, he fumbled the football. Oh, Upland. He's got it. He's. Well, he's oh, he made a cut. He's still on his feet. He's going to go all the way across the other side. He's even going to go backwards a little bit. However, we got people catching up to him. Another and, flag. Uh, maybe a horse collar because I see a penalty there. Yeah. And I'm seeing that was more, more one on one. So it must have been a horse collar. Yeah, Alex, Alex Bronco with yet another drop. This time a fumble picked up by number 11 from Upland. Uh, Shamar Wet Whetstone, the defensive back, he picked it up. He almost made it to the end zone, but. A uh, plethora of wow. cathedral linemen kind of got in his way. He runs clear across the field, but cathedral got him by the uh, the shoulder pads and threw him down, which is illegal. Yeah, it's never a great idea to run backwards, even if you're going to go across the field. You can get lucky, but that just allows more time for the defenders to get to you and get you know regain their bearings. So once again. Um, That score was Heritage 41, Calabasas 7. So Heritage just moves on against Valencia. Got Evan Rowe, backup quarterback number 16 in the game now, taking over for David Baldwin. With the game out of reach, no point in risking injury to your star quarterback. So Evan Moore, number 16, like I said, he's a sophomore, six foot, 170 pounds. Evan Moore. He apparently is in Akira Mira's class. And another touchdown, number 27, Marcus Brown Jr. Now up, Upland getting to their usual 38. <laughs> huge, huge point differential. What a scamper. Untouched, just running off, off the tackle. Yeah, at this point, Cathedral doesn't have a whole lot left in the tank, and Upland is exploiting that to its fullest extent. This extra point would put him up 59 to 20, just above the 38 and a half point uh, average margin of victory. The snap is in, the kick is up. He's going to bring it to 59 20 with two minutes 32 left in the, half of the game. Big hits and big defensive plays are are making a huge difference in this game. Yeah. Yeah, Upland's depth and cons consistency in being able to move the ball on the ground has just proved to be too much for the young Cathedral High School to endure throughout the course of the game. Yeah, they've got some huge superstars on this team and a very young one at that. A lot of them juniors. And they were playing teams like St. John Bosco and Modern Day as sophomores. So uh, they got that experience. Valuable. Yep, and so they're they're ready to, to take on big teams. Yeah, number seven, also number, number seven Peele. ranked in California, 19th nationally. Now, when you look at the kind of teams that are in California, Jay California's that powerhouse. Out. California, Texas are the two biggest powerhouse are, football states, and they're right. They've got Long Beach, Pauley, De La Modern Salle, Day, De La Salle, Hart. All right, he's we got, got the return, the Jones. He's up Jones at the 20-yard line, makes a guy miss. He's at the 24-yard line. He takes it out to about the 25-yard <laughs> line. So if you're a special teams, that's that's not bad. You you enjoy that uh, six-yard cushion from the 20-yard line because uh, otherwise it would be a touchback. 
at 20. And so anytime past that 20 yards, as I mentioned earlier, is a good thing. They're going to mark it at the 25. And it looks like Cathedral's got their backup quarterback in. Number 10, his name is Dylan Wright. Er, I'm sorry. Correction, Isaac Hernandez in quarterback. The game out of reach, no reason to uh, leave Bryce Young in there. And he's in a shotgun formation. Two receivers to his right. Hands it off to Octave. Right side, Rose Octave. to his right. Able to Octave, turn the corner. Nice little hole there. Run for 11 yards. And that's why he's a starter on this team, because he's Tell got the wheels to get that ball to a first down. Isaac Hernandez is here, just a, more than likely just hand the ball off a few times before the conclusion of this game, but motion's right, long delivery, a little high, overthrew his target by about two feet, he has a little hitch in his delivery, a little unorthodox, unorthodox throwing motion for the uh, sophomore quarterback from Los Angeles. Are allowed on the field after the game. Yeah, also, you, that's a, a long Gary distance Gary just to go Gary three Gary yards, uh, even Again, if that pass is made. It, it well takes a long Gary time get, for that ball to get there, and yeah. Yeah. a lot of time for the defensive backs to get there. Hand off to Octave again. Octave he finds a hole. Gave him about six yards. Yard May not be very tall, but Tackle he's got a lot of speed. And contrary to popular belief, that is the, the most important aspect of a team. You know, they used to say, you know, my team is much bigger this year. Now teams, coaches say, my team's Time much faster in. this year. Oh, Upland calls a timeout with 21 seconds to go. I guess if you have the timeouts, use them. Now, uh, Upland I don't know enjoys the luxury of both big and fast. Yes, as most good football teams are fortunate to have. Upland, uh, one has to wonder what sort of strategy you have to review when you're up by 39 <laughs> points with 21 seconds to go. It, it's probably Tim Salters. Keep your hands to yourself. Like, when you don't want to make any silly, you know, things that will cost you, oh, I, you know, people getting kicked out. I think he's uh, going over coverages. And, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to lose that 39 point cushion. Anything could happen, James. <laughs> 21 seconds is an eternity in high school. All right. Seconds. Isaac Hernandez, sure. Octave at his side is running back in the shotgun formation. We got we got split wide receivers on each side. And Upland with uh, their Hernandez three, four. With, with the hitch, he throws a nice ball. Down the center. Ooh. I see if, uh, this, if number 33, if Isaiah was looking up, he might have yeah. used that off. I mean, that was. Four seconds. Uh, they're just letting the clock. Looks like they're just letting the clock go on an incomplete yeah, pass. Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna do the handshake, and I think that's probably what Salter was talking yes. about here. No fight. Is yeah. No fight. Well, so these you two, get yourself kicked out. These two so that you're ineligible is, next game. Every player is valuable. Every every member of this team, all the support staff, is what allows the success of a team. And every member is valuable in that aspect. Absolutely. And so Upland will be playing Oaks Christian next week, the day after Thanksgiving at Oaks Christian. Um, that <laughs> game will not be televised. Uh, but uh, we'd like to thank you and our sponsors of uh, Main Street Garage, Veronica Grass, and One Up Graphics. For One of Graphics UTV. and Rancho Cucamonga? That's right. That's a great studio. And they are supporting these students here of uh, UTV, UHS Video Production, uh, our camera person, uh, Kaden Bruce and Akira Mira, and our director, Sierra, Sierra Sherrod. Sierra Sherrod. Sharon, Sierra Sharon. Sharon, sorry. And uh, Sean Smith. Sean and Smith. I'm James Mira. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, we will see you in the playoffs, the third round. Good Next night, Upland. Friday. Final score, Upland Highlanders, 59. Like to thank Cathedral, Cathedral Phantoms, 20. 20. Good night.
Thank you.